Oh, we are live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pong distracted me completely, and I missed it going dark, and wow. then it came back in. Hello, and welcome. Trot's just like <laughs> cringing away. Uh, it's fine. It's what they, they love it. They love the chaos, Chris Trot. Yeah, you give yourself all that. Yeah, yeah it's fine. <laughs> Hello, uh, welcome everybody to a new episode of High Rollers D and D. Uh, it's a brand new month. It's gonna be May, and oh. we're here. Uh, oh, it is May. <laughs> yeah, it is May first. Yeah. Uh, Brand new oh month. Uh, we got some exciting D and D content coming up for you today on High Rollers. Guarantee. I'm joined by the regular players. This is them. Da -da -da -da. I'm a regular person. You're a regular person. We're always we got, here. I'm, a regular, <laughs> I'm regular. We got Trot. We got Kim. And then on the other side, help. We got Tommy. And we got Katie. Hey, what a oh. lovely. Hey yo, it's me, your boy. It's, Back at it again. It's your boy. With another dice roll. Boom. Ooh, two. Two, exciting. <laughs> Very good. People can what see it now, mean? Tom. We have got a lot of announcements, so oh, yeah. I'm going to rattle through these, and we're going to kick things off. You might have already, you might have already glanced a little oh, something really? there. Well, what's oh, different? What's that? Uh, let's have, in fact, let's trot. You might as well talk a little bit about it. What, hey. are, you, what are you wearing there, trot? Uh, maybe the fastest turnaround of t-shirts known to man. Yes. And woman. And all people, and birds in particular, because we got. <laughs> I wish I were a birdie t shirt. It's alive right now. It is live. Two minutes ago, yeah. Yeah. right uh, now. It's up. Uh, limited, obviously, limited run. This is like a, a fast, meme t shirt because we thought people would like it and find it funny. Uh, yeah. It looks great. Um, just a lovely little subtle. I wish I were a birdie. <gasps> Careful. Uh, Careful. You gotta be careful. Yeah, I'm not careful. wearing a ring of three wishes. Oh, so okay. It's okay. fine. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't wear a ring that my DM warned me about would activate when I say the words I wish and then say something so silly. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> buy that shirt now, please. Um, yeah. I'm earning us money for my terrible decisions, so yep. thank you. Absolutely. Quickest uh, turnaround ever. Thank you very much yeah. to the Fresh Merch team for yeah, making that. Job. I've been a birdie it's the so entire quick. time and I didn't have a shirt. You've got a whole plush. Yeah. I am a you birdie. Got, you got, you got a plush. Yeah. And I have an I am. I'm a birdie shirt. <laughs> I've always yes. been a birdie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, freshmerch.co, High Rollers he Collection. Wasn't a birdie. <laughs> I wish he wasn't a birdie. High Rollers Collection, get the I wish I were a birdie shirt. Like Fresh I said, merch. this is once these are gone, we ain't doing any more of these. This yeah. is like it's a, a, it's shirt. a yeah. It's like one a junky fun shirt. One and so done. Grab that. But it looks nice. It's made from lovely, lovely soft material. Yeah, oh, it's it our usual. Soft. It's our very usual nice. samples for um, yeah. t-shirts. So I didn't realize Rui was wearing it. Yeah, yeah, I gave one to well. You were wearing a totally different t-shirt. But wait, hang on. Yeah, she changed. That's that's when? a cool shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. And that's a high roller shirt, obviously. Oh, of course, yeah, it's yeah. really good. But what if you shirt. want to wear other cool shirts made by somebody exist. in high rollers? They don't exist. Well, like a cool shirt you're wearing, Mike. Like this shirt that I'm wearing, this oh. cool dog shirt. That is a Where great shirt. Where can I shirt. get this from? I think I could get this from burnthepast.store. Reed, do you want to tell us about burnthepast.store? Hi, I made a store. <laughs> 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 no, it was, it was a really cool little thing I did as a joke, and then people were like, put them on shirts. <laughs> and so I put them on shirts, and now I have a store. They're Really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's yeah. underselling herself. They're awesome. Oh, yeah. There's you. one with the the worms on it. The worm on a string. Time to sin. Time yeah. to sin. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all based on like nineties and eighties toy culture with like cool Vintage. like tattoo design elements and stuff. So if you're nostalgia. Big one, nostalgia. Big, big nostalgia. Very big very proud of you. It's very cool oh, design. I we literally like when they went live, a bunch of us bought them because they're genuinely really cool designs. So uh, yeah, <laughs> you. check it out. And we're this is the what is it? Good good dogs. Good dogs club. Good dogs club. I'm wearing. Um, there's also a finger monster, which I bought. I'm not wearing today. Finger monster. You got the finger monster one, didn't you? I think. And Craig all. Uh, and we also Craig got the Furby. Furby, the Furby one Furby as well, shirt. which is the classic. Yeah. Well, there might be a new Maybe. design you just put up as well. There's a new one. Yeah. There's a. Uh, yeah. As well. what yeah is so it? Look out for that one. Um, yeah. Little hint. Little hint. It's a. It's a cool skull design. Ooh, <laughs> what kind really of toy it. could it be? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. Ree's got a cool. Good job, Ree. Burn the past store. So why not get your I wish I was a birdie shirt at freshmerch.co and then head on over to Burn the Past Store Burn and get yourself some cool nostalgic t toy shirts as well yeah. to go with it. Uh, it. Other things, we have some new music. You might have already heard some. Chris Trot, tell us about this. Um, I had an awesome interaction with the guys at TCT Adventures. They made a game called Celesta, Crown of the Magister. It's an awesome game that me and Tom are addicted to it. We've been playing really tons of it. And I was listening really to the good. music and I'm like, this is really good music. I'd love it in our campaign. So I, le I reached out to them and they're like, yeah, that's fine. You okay. can absolutely use our music. So um, I've, 
spread it Spring- amongst Sprinkled it, 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 it yeah, in. It'll be dapples. sprinkled in there. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's not, not sponsored at no. all, by the way, no. Solasta. Um, us... It's just a really cool game. Uh, we've been playing it a ton. We just love the music we for it. We just got so. permission, yeah, yeah. to yeah. use it. Well, so. and that's the thing, right? Like They're kind enough to give us the permission to use the music. The least we can do is talk about their fun game yeah, that you guys are playing. It is really good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much to those chaps. Was it TC? I haven't played it. TCT Adventures. TCT Adventures. Thank you very much. Um, other things. Uh, the other thing which went live at 5 p.m. today, not just a brand new cool shirt, and by the gods, we don't understand it, <laughs> but High Rollers has a TikTok now. Ticking and the TikToks. Um, no, the wonderful God Sarah, God. who does the Yogscast TikTok, is, Yogtok. has basically helped us, Yogtok on, on TikTok, I believe, um, yeah. has helped us build a High Rollers TikTok where we've got a bunch of uh, clips. So we've been asking people in our Discord to share you know, great clips and moments, but also a bunch of original stuff that we filmed here in the studio. It's very silly and dumb, and we don't really understand a lot of it, but Sarah tells us Some what to do. Some of us are pretty savvy, Mark. Oh, sorry. We're yeah. pretty Gen X-y over here. Yeah. Most of us are oh, pretty me... old and don't get it. <laughs> don't you remember Mark's number one victory royale song? And that is where it all began. <laughs> hey, that was where this all came from, yeah. so I'm going to hold on to that one. We're uh, so current. Victory, Chug Jug, Chug Jug, Chug that's Jug. The song. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even remember it. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, you can go follow us on TikTok and get some original, silly, behind the scenes stuff that we're making, but also yeah. a bunch of really funny clips. That's the kind of go share it. That's the, that's what they yeah. want you, us to do. Is getting us out there? You just get us out there, you know. Hmm. Um, right. Uh, other things. This also isn't a sponsor, but today is the last day to get in on my good friends at MCDM's new fifth edition monster book called Flea Mortals. Um, I put a link on my Twitter uh, if you want to go grab it from there and I'm sure the mods uh, can probably put that in chat in a minute um, but not only is this a great D&D book chock full of awesome new monsters and new revamp rules like minions from 4th edition but also uh, I wrote a pretty big chunk on it for four wow. big baddies nice. uh, oh, called wow. the Apocalypse Knights oh yeah oh, they're okay. awesome they are um, so cool yeah Matt, Matt Colville already spoiled what I was working on so I know <laughs> I'm telling people but yeah um, it, it's I've had great support from my friend James Intracasso um, and the MCDM crew and that is literally it's the last day on Kickstarter. They're really close okay. to $2 million. Wow. So if you want to get a really cool 5th edition monster book, go and check out MCDM's Kickstarter for Flea Mortals. And you can also check out my Apocalypse Night. It's a quick shopping list. We got Birdie shirt. Mm-hmm. You've got to get vintage nostalgia toy shirt yep. from Restore from yep. the past. Yep. You've also got to get... Uh, follow on TikTok. Follow us on TikTok. Yeah. We don't have to buy. You just... No. And then Kickstarter, MCDMs, MCDM Flea Mortals. So. And get Game Pass so you can play Solasta, I suppose. <laughs> and, and yeah, Solasta as well. That's pretty good. Pretty cool. um, and then uh, the only other thing I was going to mention is don't forget, if you've got Amazon Prime, if it's just sitting there doing nothing, why not throw a little sub in? Maybe it's expired. Away? Maybe it's expired and you got it's open. It's free to use. Use it on old high rollers. It's why not? Emotes. Use it on old high rollers. Those dun-duns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. dun-duns are free, aren't they? Dun-duns are follow emote. Follow us yeah. for a dun-dun emote. There you go. Um, um, yeah. But why not? Use that. And then you can also go check out it's on Patreon. Gateway. You get early access to our podcast on the Patreon mm. um, and also little bits and updates when we can. Um, and yeah, all of that good stuff. Uh, that's it. That is it for the announcements. Quite a few to get through. Indeed. Um, with that... Dun 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 dun, 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 I believe. Dun, dun, dun. Take it away. Dun. And welcome back to High Rollers. Last time, our heroes descended into the magma chamber of the immense 
Volcanos, a huge volcanic mountain in the Hawkstorn archipelago. Protected to some degree by the demigoddess Vala, who conjured up a sphere of magic that kept out the worst of the heat, the party slowly floated down through the magma to deliver a device that would stabilize the eruptions in the region. However, this endeavor was interrupted by Gulzor, the Gulzor! Great Worm! Gulzor! A magma-infused worm that attacked them, knocking them out of the sphere and into the scorching lava, or swallowing some of them entirely. Defeating Golzor and activating the device, Nova teleported the party back to the Storm Chaser, their airship, to recuperate. But during this recuperation, a rather careless comment from Lucius caused the wish ring he had gained in their fight with Gratzt in the Feywild <laughs> became active and the handsome High Elf became a glorious peacock Aracocra, much to Quill's dismay. Now, the party have been invited to the Titan Valena's Demiplane to help in the completion of her final projects with the hope that she will then rejoin Siaska for the good of Aroes. Uh, and that is where we're gonna pick up today. Uh, you are all already aboard the Storm Chaser. Um, I believe that Quill and D1, this diamond dwarf woman, like made of diamond, uh, who is some sort of construct uh, connected with Valena, uh, was inputting a navigation. They are basically coordinate, you know, planning their route, which will take you beneath the sea. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, D1 will sort of be like, I have made the requisite preparations and plotted the course, but please be aware this will take us into a high pressure underwater environment. So I suggest you make your preparations now. Okay, okay. Uh, so we're going to need the shields. The shields, right? Is that does it, do they work underwater? They work underwater, right, Nova? Yes. This is the preliminary flight using them, though, so I can't give you a hundred percent confirmation on that. That okay. would be rather reckless as me as a scientist. What can you give me? Sixty-five point two five percent. Sixty-five point two five. I'll take the two five, but. 65? Is everyone okay with 65%? I don't need to... I can breathe underwater, so I'm kind of fine. I don't need to breathe. Oh, good. I don't, yeah. I don't, no, I don't either. Sounds like it's a birdie problem. I need to breathe underwater. <laughs> One of the wolf pack just puts his hand up. Yeah, I mean, all the crew need to breathe underwater, and I mean, it is a birdie problem, Lucius. I'm a bird. You're a bird. I still. keep forgetting. A beautiful bird. Okay. <laughs> I told you you were my favourite. Yeah, I'll take that. But still, 65% doesn't sound great, Nova. Well, if I'd had more time to run all the tests that I wanted to, then I could have brought that percentage up. But, you know, everyone was like, oh, end of the world, we have to go as soon as possible, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It is rather important that we do it sooner rather than later. Yeah. And that's why you get 65.25%. Okay. Also, Lucius is standing, like, he hasn't figured out his physical <laughs> space yet. So, like, a wing is going Good. into, like, Nova and <laughs> I'm like, pushing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like plucking feathers off. Well, that reminds me, swimming might be different for you now. That you've got a lot more. Oh, he is absolutely well, not going to be able to. Okay. Oh, uh, we're going to have to drag him along, aren't we? It's less kicking. The talons, the kicking won't do much. It's all wing. At least he has hollow bones now, so you could drag him easier. Very true. Hollow I bone. mean, he was fine before as well. <gasps> oh no, you've got hollow bones. <laughs> what do you mean? What's oh, wrong no, with that? Oh no, he's got hollow bones. What does that mean? Uh, I mean... Get them out! <laughs> <laughs> no, you, wanna, you remember all the times bits have been taken off me? Remember that time I got my jaw shot off? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stabbed, burnt. Oh. Lost, lost an eye. Already Long lost an arm when we met him, yeah. so I mean... Yeah, yeah. yeah that might be you now. Actually, it's yeah. quite short, I think, a peacock's beak. Mm. Yeah. It's I little... forget what peacocks look like. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Uh, D1 will say, if you have any questions about the journey, I am happy to assist. Uh, okay, how, how long are we going to be underwater for? The journey should approximately take four hours from our current location. Right. Uh, okay, how much of that is underwater? Almost all of it. Oh, good. Okay, good. Then we've got 65% chance throughout the entire journey to... 0.25. 0.25. Do we have any options to emergency evacuate back to the surface if things were to go wrong? Like we sprung a leak or something? Yeah, it's called fly up. Good, yeah, yeah. go up. Can we go vertically go, up go with yeah, our vessel? Yeah, mm -hmm. Pushkin, yeah. It's a nice ship. Mm -hmm. how, how deep are we going? We will be approaching near the bed of the, uh, the the bottom of the current area's plate. It won't be a quick trip to the It is surface. quite a distance under under the water. Okay. Which, you know, 
crew. You may get the bends. The who? <laughs> That's where if you repressurize too fast while you're coming out of the water, all your blood goes funny and your brains may explode. Uh, not if we're in an enclosed space, I do believe. Yeah, That's this has definitely been pressurized. I hope so, because we need to breathe. Mm-hmm. And How not many... sustain injuries. <laughs> who can um, cast the water breathing stuff? Nobody. Uh, not me. Not me. I think that was Nova's domain. Before. You had some scrolls, and Lucius is the one who can cast it, I believe. Can I? I believe so. <laughs> I don't remember. I believe it's on the sorcerer spell did. list, so if you, you use a scroll, it. you can cast it. Because, oh, I use yeah. the scroll. For yeah, it. yeah. Because yeah. yeah. nobody it's on used the sorcerer to have scroll it until list. I swapped out the Eldritch yeah. Evocation, oh. and then you, it was you. It was all you, big boy. Do we have a scroll. We bought yes, more we scrolls. bought more scrolls. <laughs> I will be casting the water breathing. Okay. It will only affect, I think, up to ten creatures. Yeah. So it won't affect the whole crew. But, but um, the crew also have their their like um their new, oh, their they uniform. Have the they have sort of like like like. Yeah, atmospheric helmets basically. Like they can, oh, okay. they can give themselves right. a very, but they don't have ox. Like they will basically only have the air that's like in their between their like suit and their their helmet. They won't have very long. Araya, <laughs> sorry, yes, sorry everyone. Yes, Captain. Can I have you for a moment? Okay. Um, he's trying to like tuck his wings in, and just look like an elf. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. How are you? Are you okay? Uh, yes, I'm a little perturb- disturbed by this. This is a sudden change. Is it disturbing? I'm not using... Well, it's just unusual, isn't it? I wasn't expecting you to suddenly become a bird man. Um, Me like, neither. But, no, I, it seems to be fine. I think that the encounter with the volcano, now that you've dealt with it, seems to be okay, but the crew's holding up well. Now, we're going to be submerging for at least mm-hmm. four hours. Yes. Do we have a emergency evacuation protocol for the crew? As in the ship is no longer functioning, we cannot you just lift the ship up? It gets real bad. Uh, what do? If we're going down that deep, I don't think that there's... I don't think that we have enough air in our suits to be able to swim up to the surface. Oh. Um, my hope was that if Nova... If Miss Vija is here, she may be able to teleport some of us away. Um, Why does everything come down to me? Because you're the most useful one. Oh, thanks. But I think that this is. But my understanding is not. not, uh, I do not. It's not that I doubt Miss Nova's calculations. I think they are quite correct. But uh, as Miss Miss Perel, the one who built the shielding systems, uh, has offered me as much assurance as she could that this should protect us from underwater. That that we should be fine. It will keep it pressurized. There's no. There's no leaks to be popped. Uh, It is not a hull. Uh, The shield should be as long as the ship has power. The shield should function. As long as the crew are aware of the risks? Oh, yes, yes. And I mean, we give them the options? We know what you are getting involved in. We are prepared to fight evil uh, galactic planar emperors, uh, giant stars that want to eat everyone. Meteors. Everyone's pretty much on board. Yes, we've, we've had meteors. meteors thrown at us. I think at this point, we're all in for the, for the final push. That's great to hear. <laughs> mm-hmm. Claws are strange. They are, yeah, you'll get used to them. Um, Do I have to trim my... Fingernails. Occasionally. You normally just scratch against wood. Would that come innately? I start scratching like with I don't know. Is that, is, that a, is that a bird thing? I know that's, that's a cat a, thing. <laughs> with cats now? <laughs> I think, yeah, you would have been better picking a cat man. You don't know anything about that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anything about Tom birds. has two cats. Uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, just, just scratch. Just scratch them. everything. Uh, do you want to say, well, I am ready to proceed and guide the ship as necessary. Thank you, D1. Um, yes, we'll get underway immediately, unless anyone has any urgent things they need to attend to before we go underwater for four hours. <sighs> I don't think so. Um, I mean, are we preparing for a fight? I don't believe so. This is just an invitation, right? Aren't we always? Are you asking, I mean... are you asking D1? Yeah. Uh, I do not believe that violence will be involved. My, I do not know the exact nature of the project that you will be working on, but I would not anticipate to involve in any combat. That does not mean to say that the process will not be dangerous and you should not make yourselves prepared for dealing with the situation. Very well. Make it so, Nova. All right. Okay. No. Engage. Well, so, Nova, the question for you is, is are you, you or Tiangong <laughs> going in the control chamber? Uh, Star Trek. Um, <laughs> I'll go in. All right, so yeah, Nova makes her way down into the uh, the Storm Chaser's e- uh, engine room, um, enters the sort of uh, coffin-like pod. Coffin. Um, Stop getting your coffin. coffin. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a like. pod. It's a pod. Sure. It's a cod. 
Uh, so God, <laughs> uh, you step inside it, and again, you feel that sensation. You become aware of the ships, and yeah, you can activate the environmental shielding, um, and yeah, you become very aware of like the depths in the situation. And Quill, your readouts begin actually they shift, and they begin showing a sort of depth. So rather than altitude, oh. as you lower down, it begins to now register mm -hmm. depth, and so your sort of displays change. Uh, might I make a request, Nova? Can you hear me over the the whatever communication? We can hear all. Very well. Uh, it's that strange personality yeah, shift yeah, yeah. into the I am ship. Um, could you, as this is a new venture for the ship, I think logging all scenarios would be very vital for research. Uh, you're doing that anyway, aren't you, Nova? Engineers log, starting. <laughs> yes, uh, I don't need a second by second analysis, but the, you know, the crucial bits. It would be good to learn from this. Captain Lucius Virian Elwin Elanasto dictates me. that there should be a log made. Little does he realize we have been making logs since day zero. Thank you, Nova, for announcing that to the entire ship. Anyway, can you let the crew that we're, we're going under? Crew of the Storm Chaser, prepare to dive underwater, prepare for submersion, prepare for the worst. No, no. Have a nice day. Okay. <laughs> as the, as the shield actually that sort of surrounds the airship, uh, you the water is displaced almost. It kind of pushes the water oh. to the side, and as it lowers down, uh, yeah, the ship peels down. And Araya and the other like people who are used to working on a sea ship, and even the crew who work, used to work on an airship, kind of take a brief moment of sort of like they voluntarily suck their. Don't be alarmed, in. everyone. <laughs> As the I'm a little alarmed. <laughs> I'm terrified. Right terrified. Now. <laughs> the ship fully submerses. Uh, the sails, there's no need. The crew take all of those in. The, the skylines are taken in. And instead, now it is simply being propulsed by the Ethereum engines um, and the magical nature of the airship itself. Uh, D1 on Quill's display, D1 has projected a course and is currently basically stood next to you um, okay. watching the whole thing. But the, the the Storm Chaser almost follows this path. Like, it's been a kind of predetermined path that it's now following, and Araya is just, you know, keeping keeping an eye out for unexpected dangers. How much can we see uh, around us? Like Not I very far. Visibility's not yeah, good. Vis I, I, when you're at the surface, you see, can see a lot more, but as you get deeper and deeper, it becomes this dark blue, sort of ominous darkness beyond. The, sh the shielding, you can probably see maybe like 20, 30 feet beyond, um, but even with your senses, it is like trying to watch through a camera, like yeah. you can see kind of thing. Okay. Um, so your little uh, scrying sensors, sorry. Um, the journey is fairly... Uh, quiet. Uh, there is no... Uh, you don't encounter any creatures. Uh, you do see sea life, but none of it aggressive and all of it on, of a smaller scale. Um, as the ship descends into the kind of much more tropical waters around the Hawkstone Archipelago. Big coral reefs. Uh, you see much more unusual sort of sea life, brightly coloured, um, as it begins going lower and lower. And um, as you near sort of the bottom of this section of the, the sea floor, you do see more of these kind of scattered, broken remnants of salt Solvin ruins of this ancient city that Century would probably recognize a bit more. Um, Solvin was this enormous metropolis. It was massive, you know, this huge, huge city. Um, and, but pieces of it are kind of scattered in the seafloor, dragged along by currents or bits and pieces. Um, eventually, the Storm Chaser uh, comes to a deep underwater gorge, which, you know, the land splits open and the course has you going down into it, which is deeper and deeper underwater. Uh, the gorge is narrow, tight, sheer cliffs, you know, underwater cliff faces around you. Um, and Araya is very nervously at the controls, um, making sure that, like, any loose rocks won't block their passage um, and things like that as you slowly begin to make your way through. Uh, how's everyone feeling as, like, you are You are basically almost like it feels like you're at, at night, like, on on the deck of the ship, you're dry, you can breathe, um, but it is so dark that the crew have had to bring out like lights and, and light magical t uh, torches and things like that. Yeah. Um, and it is pitch black, uh, you know, beyond this little shimmering field around the Storm Chaser. I mean, I'm just like intensely monitoring. I don't know what the display is right now, but if it's like arrows we're following or something like that. Yeah, it's basically like, like there's like a kind of dotted line um, and uh, D1 is occasionally she will lean in and make adjustments. Like she just touches the console and like mm -hmm. it makes little adjustments um, as it looks like some of the, she, she probably say something like, it appears that the seismic activity has shifted this area. I'm making adjustments. And then, and it just 
ever so slightly shifts the dotted lines over a little bit. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm just like intensely monitoring that. If if the ship is veering slightly off course, I'm like saying, okay, left, 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 right, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to keep it on track. And I guess any time, I suppose if you're underwater, it's just any noise, just whoo, going right past the yeah. ship and seeing any light. Ooh. Ah, uh, you do. You, you probably would hear in the faint distance, like sea creatures, like you can hear sort of, you know, distant noises, but it's very muffled, um, and you don't see any any signs of threat or danger for sure. Don't see them. Anything else from anyone else? Yes, sentry's just like it's just like astral space. It's just like astral space. Only it's very deep and very dark and very scary. I don't know what's down here. It's just like astral space. It's just like astral space. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. I imagine it's kind of like when you walk into a library and everything's really quiet and everyone just starts naturally whispering because <laughs> yeah. it's like just really quiet. It's ominous, right? Uh, and having this kind of like pressure around you and uh, as and, and yeah, the 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 ship navigates this labyrinth of narrow cracks in the ground, basically. Um, and you can see again like remnants of buildings now, like wedged into the sides of the gorge itself, like almost like projecting outwards. You see like the tip of a spire or like the top of a rounded uh, dome of a tower maybe, but it all broken and ruined, overgrown with sea life and things like that. Um, eventually, the ship comes to a dead end. Uh, the pathway leads to just the end of a gorge where this great tall underwater mountain and cliffside just looms in front of you and you've descended deep, deep, deep into the ocean at this point. Um, and yeah, the navigation just stops. Um, Valor and Max, who are kind of on the deck with you, uh, Valor sort of kind of closes her eyes for a moment and she's just like, this isn't the, this isn't the demi-planar breach, but Valena's magic is incredibly strong here. Like, her presence is suffused into, into the earth here, beyond this 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 region, this beyond this gorge. It's very unusual. I've never encountered anything like this before. D1. Yes, Captain. Have you ever been here? Yes. You were created here. Yes. When was the last time you were down here? Approximately. In in days. 96 days and seven hours. Right, so it's relatively recently. Yes. And does anything feel different? No. Okay, good to know. It will just take me a moment to request the appropriate activation. Please do. And you just watch as she just stands there completely still, this diamond dwarf woman just stands perfectly still. Nothing changes, her expression is smiley round smile. And then you hear, she's just like, activation complete and you hear this grinding of stone as not a, me a mechanism, the stone is magically pulled apart like a curtain. It kind of drifts to the side, pulling open, rippling with magic as it turns. And you can actually see that D1's hands, even though the rest of her isn't moving, her fingers are ever so slightly controlling that movement as they kind of split the earth of the mountainside. And beyond, in the thick of the earth, in this deep underwater gorge, you find the storm chaser begins to pass through an immense cavern, the scale of which defies any reality or expectation. It is like entering another world, a sky that you can't see. It almost becomes this voluminous space um, you see great columns of stone, minerals, and metal are placed throughout this cavern um, on either side of you uh, with dozens of bridges and platforms connecting them. It's almost like you're going down the street of some fantastical, enormous city, but you can't see beyond these columns and these bridges. Um, what you do see is flashes of light just here and there moments like flashes you can hear the faint sounds of hammer and steel and stone you can see quill from your position with your scrying crystals on these bridges like almost like scaffolding these stone bridges uh, amongst this space of maidens of valena and all different gemstone types and colors working at something um, but you can't see, the, the sensor range just doesn't quite reach. You can see the outline of something, maybe buildings, um, but they appear to be working on something. And the Storm Chaser begins moving once again, following a long, slow line past it through this enormous cavern. 
Holy crap. Has this been under solvent the whole time? We are not under solvent. Where, where are we? We are currently in the major metropolis zone that, re- that uh, houses the ma- majority remains of the city of Solvin. We're in Solvin? A section of it. What? How? I... I guess it must have been submerged. That is correct. Most of the city was submerged when the uh, cataclysm took place, when Atelicus broke, sundered the earth. The sundering, yes. Would Sentry have seen this place before? It's hard because you can only just about see the outline of stuff. You can't really see any details. If you want to make a perception check for me, um, you're like peering through the shielding that's like keeping all the water out and it's really hard to see any sort of definition or shape. Um, Beyond shape, rather. Perception, where are you going? Perception. 12 plus 12, 24. 24, okay. Yeah, even though it's hard to make out details, you do begin to, you recognize, unlike the rest of where you've seen the ruins of Solven, which are like a scattered tower, a broken piece of wall, you are seeing like full buildings. Some of which have been destroyed or removed. I might have rolled that wrong, sorry. That's right. Uh, I might have got a 14 instead. That's okay. Yeah, so... I mean, I'll still say that, yeah, you can see, like, full buildings, like towers, spires, domes, streets. You can see the outline of streets. Like, you are, you imagine that you would be flying over Solvin if this were not underwater, but now you are sort of drifting through it. Um, But these stone archways and, and bridges, that's all been constructed. Like, this cavern is almost like it's been formed over Solvin and it is now being sort of rebuilt and refought. Or like, not, you're not sure what they're doing. It doesn't look like they're trying to... In fact, I would say, yeah, you don't know what they're doing. They're working on the city somehow. Um. Hmm. So what, what, what are you building? What, what, what is all this? I'm afraid, that the, I'm afraid that the information regarding the Valena's second project is currently not for me to share. But it's... It's, it's, it's solving. It's, it's here. I could... I could walk. I could walk on that, on, on the ground, like I was back home. It's there. It's so close. My apologies, Sentinel Prime. I am not at liberty to discuss the nature of the second project. That is only for the Forge Mistress to discuss. It's okay. We'll, we'll get our answers, Sentry, as okay. soon as we get access to Velena herself. Yeah. Uh, anything from anyone else? Squirrel just taking it all in. Just yeah, I'm just seeing, like, I, I, I'm try, I guess I would try and figure out, A, how many of these maidens there are. Are they, are uh, they just all I over mean, the there's place? hundreds of them, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you, you lose kind of track and count. Like, you only catch, like, glimpses of them, but, like, looking out in the distance, you see, like, a little speck of light here, a little speck of light there. And it looks like they have, like, magical tools that they're using, you know, almost like the kind of spark of, like, a welding gun or, like, something like that. It's almost like they're, they're doing, but something, you know, a magical version. I guess they illuminate quite a lot as well. Yeah, and it's just... Um, and then it kind of catches the light. Um, but, yeah, you see, like, hundreds of these bridges. Like, these columns have been sort of, like, built around the city. Um, make a perception check for me, Quill, because you've got the senses, and also, like, you do have much keener vision than most. <laughs> much There's still, like, silhouettes vision. and stuff. We yeah, for, for you guys, it's all just, like, flashes and silhouettes of buildings. Like, imagine, like, a shadowy cityscape around you, right? 24. 24. <laughs> do we have dark vision? 60. Uh, oh, I don't. You. Yeah. Gong does. Yeah, so, like, does? yeah, you're really weird. It's like, why, why isn't my color, why isn't my vision changing? It's just... No, no black and white vision for Lucius anymore. Uh, it's very strange. Um, Quill, like, yeah. I mean, yes, you can definitely see them working. You still don't quite know what they're doing, but you begin to notice other things. You realize that whilst you are traveling down this, like, main section, it is very purposely being cleared. And actually, looking beyond, you don't think that the city is very wide. It's almost like it's long and thin, like a kind of like a cut of a city. Like something has been sort of like somebody has taken like a long slice of the city and kept it um, intact. Uh, you do also notice that the maidens 
you recognize pieces that they're working on. It's not just that they're, some of them seem to be repairing buildings or building new things like tunnels and connect, uh, connections between them. Some of them appear to be installing weapons, like the arcane turrets that you have on the on the Storm Chaser. Oh my god. <laughs> this is cool as hell. Um, Sentry, uh, if you know this part of the city, would you know why this particular area would be preserved? Yeah, I mean, with 14, I can't say that you know it exactly. This is definitely a Solvin, somewhere in Solvin. Mm -hmm. it's, not the it's not the royal palace, you know that. Um, but the city was so massive, like, you're not really sure what part you're currently in. Mm. It's, it's hard to know. There's, there's, there's nothing that could tell me where we are right now. Solvin was huge. Um, mm. Would a commune of nature help? You can try, yeah. You can do whatever you want. The one of the game. Oh uh, yeah, I'll I'll cast a commune of nature. Yeah, just give me a give me a uh, reference on that. What does it do? Um, so you briefly become one with nature and gain knowledge of the surrounding territory. Mm -hmm. um, the spell doesn't function where nature has been replaced by construction, such as dungeons and in towns. Mm -hmm. um, but I gain knowledge on uh, three factors of my choice, which could be um, terrain and bodies of water, prevalent plants, minerals, animals, or peoples, powerful celestials, fey, fiends, elementals, or undead, influence from other planes of existence, and buildings. Okay, which three do you want? Um, could I do um, buildings, um, influence from other planes, mm -hmm. and let's do prevalent plants, minerals, animals, or peoples. <laughs> minerals? I mean, oh, man. Okay. So, yeah. uh, right, plants, there's no people. I'll tell you that now. There's no people here. Um, plants, all kinds of aquatic sea life. Seaweed and all sorts of, like, you know, They're not what like, you expect. afraid of this area, then. Who? The, the aquatic life. When I say aquatic, I mean, like, plant life. Oh, like, right. Kind of like seaweed. There's no animals here. Mm. There's no, no fish fishes. or anything like that yeah. at all. Okay. Um, and then in terms of uh, minerals, uh, you detect uh, over a hundred different sizable chunks of ruby, topaz, sapphire, emerald, quartz, diamond, all of that stuff, uh, which you do are uh, immediate. And also, you that's weird, there's a huge chunk of diamond next to you. <laughs> um, influence from other planes, none. Oh, yeah. um, I don't think that the Titan would count because they're they're not an elemental or anything like that. No, I like... guess I guess there is some hint of a celestial influence, but you think that that is just because this is obviously somehow connected to Valena in some way. Um, but no, like, oh, there's a devil or at work or anything like that. Buildings. It's interesting because the spell doesn't function in a city, but this is a city that's been overtaken by nature. So I'm going to allow it, uh, and I would say that yeah, there's there's key buildings here. Um, uh, the chief barracks of the of of Solvin. Um, you also one of the the uh, I didn't come up with a name for it, but basically the place that provided magical power to the city. Solvin basically had electricity, but through magical energy, right? Like so it had like yeah, like a power grid. Um, it had like magical lighting, so that it had like street lights. It had uh, functional like transportation in Solvin, like carts and things that would move by magic. Um, that building, like the core building of that is here. Um, the pa No palace, uh, you detect all sorts of like different, you know, things. But also, some of it has been changed. Like, you're like, some of this is definitely different. Like, um, buildings have been taken down and built, new things have been built in place and stuff like that. Cool. Hopefully where, that's... Where the buildings are, great. obviously I can't see anything, but... Just for fun, mm -hmm. um, the buildings they're making. Quill can, cool, can just say, oh, "I can see this," and you can ask Quill a question. So, are they like Solvin styled, or are they just doing it in a totally different look? There is an element of Solvin's architecture, but the form and the functionality is completely different. It's hard to tell. You can't really see. Even Quill's vision is still only limited to like, like he can't see the whole thing. He knows that it doesn't go. It is this like vertical slice. Um, if anything, if I was to say to Quill, like, it looks like they're building more sort of covered structures, like tunnels and things like that, that connect the buildings to one another. Um, but hard to say. Oh, interesting. Um, would Tiangong know why Starbane targeted Solvin? Initially? Yeah. Yeah, Tiangong will tell you. Yes, Nova Vija, Solvin was the height of Aroes magical magitech weaponry. Callus uh, envisioned it as his greatest threat on Aroes, mm. along with the Titans. 
Solvin's Magitech was comparable to the Valkyrian Empire's at the time. Interesting. And did he, did he succeed in his mission to, to stop it, to basically destroy it? The Sundering took place before Kallus could complete his conquest of Aroas. The city was besieged, as Sentinel Prime will likely be able to tell you. However, Solvin was maintaining a defense at the time. Mm. It was close to defeat, and essentially you would hear that, like, because you were there, you know it was near the verge of the city was being overrun, but it hadn't been fully taken, mm. and then Atelicus. Mm. Uh, but the other thing Tiangor will say, Kallus was not present for the siege of Solvin. Mm. Uh, Zarkira and other forces were the ones primarily attacking the city. Mm. Kallus was, at that time, engaging Siaska. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess through like the ship's comms, like you'd hear kind of Nova just being like, um, we have a theory based on Starbane's attack on Solvin. It could be Velena is trying to use Solvin's superior Magitek ability as a defense against Starbane now. That would make sense. But I just sense the energy around me now that there's great, there's, there's the great magical energy still present here. I think we're near the power plant where the main source of power was for Solvin. Well, it's currently inactive, if that's the case. Yes, I can't no see lines. anything. Yeah, it's, it's currently inactive. Looks dead down there. This could be why Velena's here. The Storm Chaser eventually reaches the end of its destination. You've traveled like miles, you know, just tracking across this long slice of the city. Like it's, it's been significant. And it eventually comes to rest at a, uh, again, an, a large edifice carved into the back of this cavern. Like, you reach another stone wall at the back of the city. And here there is an edifice. Uh, the edifice is uh, of a an older dwarven woman hunched protectively over a small forge uh, that she's almost sheltering the flame kept within it. The forge is decorated with hundreds of rubies that give the image of a, a faint dying ember still in the forge, and the dwarven woman is sort of around it protectively. Um, uh, D1 uh, just says, we have reached our destination. Um, uh, as in the ship can go no further, or? Valor... I think I know what she means. This is the breach point. Uh, beyond, th this is a, a sort of a landmark to signify that this is where we can access Valena's realm. Okay, um, and D1, would you want to come with us into? I will not, I'm afraid I am not permitted to enter the final forge. My, okay. ju my duty was to bring you here. I have done so. And afterwards? Are you remaining on this ship while we go in? My duty is to help finish the final projects. So you'll be going back to work? She doesn't... Right. The um, you know, she doesn't seem to have a... You know, like, she's given her statement. I oh, guess we'll make her own way back to the surface. Or maybe we'll get another... helper on the way up. Uh, so we don't lose our way. D1 will say, The Forge Mistress requests that you leave your, comp your crew and your ship here. I, I've been told to assure you that it will be safe. Uh, okay. okay. Again, cut off completely there. Um, I will, I'll get the scroll ready for water breathing. Um, uh, Valor, Valor just says, I think I can access the breach from the deck of the ship. I can take us through. All right, just in case I've got the scroll ready. You should keep it ready. I don't know what's going to be on the other side. That's, that's the difference here. Is unlike with Zephyr, I knew the sort of environment we were going into. This is locked down. I, I can't even glimpse inside. The only reason I can access it is because Valena is allowing me. I can I can feel her presence here. She's right. she's allowing me to open the door for us. Are you getting any um any glimpse at all of Valena's um I wanna say emotional state? <laughs> sort of. She's calm. She's not like Zephyr. Zephyr, I could feel Zephyr's rage. There's sadness, but there's calm here. Uh but also a sort of anticipation, like she wants to finish something. Okay, that's reassuring, I think. Um, you ready to go? Sure. Everyone? I'm really good at talking to people and, you know, sorting stuff out and 
definitely not fighting, and it's all my my strong point. Mm. So, mm. I just thought maybe it would have been good to have some of those helmets that the crew have. <laughs> Get those ordered next time. Next time. Next time. Yeah, but there still wouldn't be. There would only be like a small amount of air in them. True. How does this work with uh, Nova and Tiangong disengaging from Uh, the ship? I mean, they can run the ship. Like you're you're not needed to be here. Yeah. Uh, It's just easier. Like there are, like you've trained some of the Wolfpackers apprentice engineers, and they're like, "Yep, we can run it." They don't go in the pod. Yeah. Like, well, I'm not going in there. (laughs) But they, they, I'm not going in the coffin. Um, but they, they can run the power. They just can't do anything. Like if you leave them here, like. If they were to come under attack, it would be harder for them to use certain systems. Yeah, but the right. shield, the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. they can keep, yeah, 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 they can keep all of that active. Just not. That's what they did when the Volcanus was attacking as well. <laughs> Yoink! Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like the the kind of the the pod opens, you can step out and join the crew, uh, join join your companions up Woo! on the ship. Max and Valor uh, will kind of stand up. Max is obviously going to stay by Valor, um, and uh, Valor will just look and say. Well, I'm ready when you are. I can open the door. I, again, I don't know what to expect, but uh, we will do our best. And it does seem that Valena at least wishes to talk, um, which is not what I, the impression I got from Zephyr or what I get from the others. Let's okay. just prepare for any circumstance, I guess. Like disagreeing with her plan. Yes, but yeah. let's not forget she's she's a god, so Titan. we'll treat her with that sort of respect. Technically speaking, she's a titan. I know, technically, she doesn't want to be called a titan, I'm sure. (laughs) All right, all right. And uh, Val will just say, step behind me. Um, And she sort of raises her hands and she focuses and you see sort of her hair begin to lift up from the back of her neck, almost becoming the shimmering nova, like nebula uh, around her, like like her mother. Um, and her eyes open and they become bright purple energy, like no more eyes, just this blazing energy. She puts her hands in front of her and as she parts them, uh, a kind of glowing purple door kind of in, in space, kind of this triangle opens up and there is now this just big glowing white purple light. Um, cool. and Val- I love that shit. And Valor's Val just like holding her hands like this, uh, kind of in a, in a triangle shape in front of her, and she's just like, I should go through last, you should step through first. All right. I am walking on the spot, hoping that someone goes first. I think, uh, Sentry, with your connection to this place, and I suppose to Valena, you should probably take the lead. Okay, I will. All right. Guide us into Solvent. Sentry goes in first, and then everyone follows, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. And then Valor and Max come last. And what you see before you. <gasps> oh, I can't do that and flick it. Oh. Because that will knock a lot of things Okay. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> oh, oh she big. Uh, yes. Put it up. Like, I had to. Oh, she's big. Lovely. Very cool. She's real big. Okay. So, you find yourselves on dry land with breathable air. The transition is somewhat disorientating for a few moments. The world around you seems to spin and haze. But when your vision clears, you feel a strange sense of familiarity. You stand on a stone platform before an almighty forge. The platform and the forge appear to be raised and suspended 30 foot of the ground of a larger chamber of rough natural rock. To the left and right, pathways seem to split off to smaller sections, almost like shrines. Whilst ahead, the space is dominated by an enormous anvil with a large forge behind it. And on either side, a curved staircase leads up to gated chambers that look down on the central area. Stone columns and arches lead upward, but there is no ceiling here. Instead, there is a night sky filled with beautiful, bright stars and the shifting pattern of the cradle. And stood behind the giant anvil is Valena. Valena is gray of hair, uh, dwarven in appearance, although at a colossal scale, nearly 20 feet tall. She has leathery skin and corded muscles that have shrunk slightly with age. She stands in a heavy fur mantle clasped by golden brooches wearing a fine circlet of mithril and adamantine upon her brow. A dark braid 
falls behind her on a long one's shoulder. And her ears are studded with numerous rings of gold and silver, as well as studs of precious stones. Her bottom lip is pierced by an onyx stone, and a mithril ring pierced through her nose uh, connects to one of her golden loops in her ears. Three diamonds are studded above her right eyebrow, and her features are round and warm. Her skin seems to shift, streaks of color ranging from dull gray like stone to black onyx to brassy brown, and finally an almost porcelain white dance across her like clouds. A thick leather apron and a belt with all sorts of handmade steel tools hangs at her waist, and her hands are shrouded in giant leather gauntlets. She rests her hands, almost leaning on the anvil in front of her. Welcome, champions of Arois. I'm kneeling as much as I can as a bird, <laughs> just instinctively. Sure. The sentry puts her hands over the matrix and just bows her head. It's good to finally meet you. I am glad that you can come to this place. I have a great need of you, and I know that you have something you must ask me to do as well. I ask only that you assist me in this final task, and then I shall gladly join my mother in the Halls of Infinite Resplendence. I'll leave out a sigh of <laughs> yeah. relief to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> do not be so eased. This task will not be easy. But I ex expect you have many questions. And whilst time is short, I am happy to give what little there remains to you in this time. What are you doing here? What, what is your plan? Fair questions, Sentinel Prime. When my mother died, when her body became the cradle, she gave tasks to Kalara, my sister, toward the dead and a task unknown to any of the other Titans to me. Two, in fact. She asked me to prepare a tool for those who would rise up to face the enemy and to build a contingency that might keep the dream of Arois from falling into darkness should everything fail. For many years, my grief at my mother's death left me with no spark of inspiration or creativity. I was desperate to fulfill her wishes and tried and tried, but nothing worked. No ideas came to mind, no schema, no design. I fell into despair for many, many years. And then, well, when Hesper told me that Callus had returned, when he told me of you, I began to watch you, and through watching you, I have seen Hadar, I have seen the great threats that face us, and the state of our world. And I have found myself in these last few months. Well, my spark has returned, and at least I have settled upon an idea. I do not know if it will work, but it is all I can do in what time I have left. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. So I guess let's start with project one. The first project, you would have seen some of it in the cavern before you came here. It is nearing completion and you do not need to assist me with it. The maidens will finish it. I have given them what power I can, though it has drained me to now complete this task. When you leave here, you will witness it, and all will be revealed. For the second, a contingency to keep the dream of Arois alive. My power is not enough to recreate the wonders of a device like the World Engine, nor is it strong enough to do develop a weapon that can defeat Hadar. But I have come up with something. I call it the Star Seed. 
It is a device that will connect the souls that Kalara gathers when they die. It will house the knowledge, the memory of Aroes. And the hope is that should everything fail, it will be sent to another reality beyond the web of eternity to find somewhere to take seed and to grow. Perhaps the divine powers of such a reality will be able to restore the dead to life in their world. Or perhaps if there are already inhabitants, they will learn of Aroes and at least tell our story. But such a device to survive the passing into a new reality, to contain all of the knowledge and memory and lives of the people of Aroes is no easy task. Once I would have called upon the other Titans to assist me, but with Hesper and Zephyr gone, Sayana weakened, and the rest, well, as you know, they are in no fit state to aid me. I must call on you. What do we need to do? That's <laughs> so good. That's so cool. That's so cool. That's so cool. <laughs> I like the name. Oh, the name is cool. Star Seed. Star Seed. It's so cool. Um, like when you're not in space. Thanks. No, <laughs> no, Tom. <laughs> That's such a cool idea. Mm. Valena gestures at the forge around her, and she points out six columns, each embedded with a light that you can see upon it, a glowing light. The process for creating the star seed. I will forge it. This will take almost all of my power to do so. These six columns each contain a foci. The foci are the components that will make up the power, the essence of the seed. Memory, she points to the one uh, on her left. This one here, yeah. on the map. On uh, our right. Yeah, you're right. Magic, the next one along, uh, next to a bridge. You can see like a stone bridge leading to this column. Spirit, she points to one on a sort of broken island which seems to be disconnected from the rest. Knowledge, she gestures to the one on her right in one of these gated uh, compartments. Connection, she gestures behind her above the forge. And then finally she points to the very ceiling and a platform floating above the forge itself. And on the map, it's the levitating one. Okay. And hope. These six foci must be infused. I cannot tell you what this process will specifically involve, but one of you must do so. Once it is infused, you will not be able to leave it. You must remain by that foci, during which I will call out which foci must be infused. We must do them in sequence and only when the preparations are ready. In the meantime, there will be other tasks as I forge. This will take considerable power. It may break sections of the final forge. It may require you to assist me in its creation. You must best aid me as you can. I will also need the aid of my sister. She gestures to Valor. You contain a spark of mother. The starseed cannot be made without it. This will drain your power too, but I know you are strong. As for what else will happen, I can tell you that there will be dangers. As the forge breaks, there may be eruptions of magical power, there may be consequences if you are unable to infuse one of the foci. You must be prepared. I'm prepared. If you have any qu further questions, I am happy to answer them. We have time. I understand this is a great ordeal that I have asked of you, and that you have many questions, not just about me and this forge, but of Mother, of the nature of Aroes. I will answer as best I can, though I have been withdrawn from the world for a long time. 
You said magic, spirit, knowledge, connection, and hope. And memory. Memory. <laughs> That's the one you forgot. <laughs> His memory. Ah, it's good. He does they, not speak for us. It writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> they will be constructed in that order. Memory, magic, spirit, knowledge, connection, and hope. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Did you think it was going to be easy? You think like, oh, we fought Zephyr and it was this big, complicated combat encounter. Uh, oh, we'll I just figured, walk in. I figured it'd be puzzly. Yeah. I was like, it's my puzzly. I didn't bring a pen. Sentry, <laughs> do you want to ask her anything about Solon and maybe Queen Storia? This is your chance. Ah. Uh. Oh so many questions. Take your time, said Norbright. I know that Solvin was your home. Did you meet Queen Astoria? In the same way that we meet many of our followers, Guinevere often prayed to me. I gave her inspiration where I could. I knew her. How did she do what she did? I know she met Root, but... Mm. Guinevere was a very talented woman long before she encountered Root Pride. She was curious. She asked many questions, was never satisfied with the answers that she was given. She drove herself. She wanted to make a better world. Seems, seems fitting that this is how Solven will be used. She was also a warrior and a protector. She knew that knowledge alone would not protect what she loved. So where possible, she built both infrastructure, architecture, Weapons, magic. She was no saint, but I know her heart was well placed. It was. It really was. Thank you. You are welcome, Sentinel Prime. Well, if there is such a thing as fate, and having seen a very big spider that literally weaves reality, or at least assists with it. I think fate has brought you here, Sentry, back to Solvin to help save Rose, or at least send it somewhere safe. It's nice to think of it that way. It seems like all the destruction wasn't Entirely for nothing. Now that we can use I it think again. Max just puts a hand on your shoulder. Doesn't say anything. Just hand on the shoulder. I think with the creation with the star seed, it just makes me feel like instead of us being flapping around with no tether and no real answer in sight, this feels like an anchor. You know? on a very, on the end of a very, 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 very long rope, but it's nice and comforting to know that there is something at the end of this, if everything goes wrong, and it feels like an anchor to me. The star seed will not, it is the best contingency I can offer. It is not infallible, if possible. She, for the first time, she smiles. She's been very stoic and kind of like serious. There's a hint of a smile at the corner of her mouth. My siblings and my mother would like you to succeed. I have done what I can. And the star seed could have failings. There is also limited. It will perhaps save the souls of Aroas. But our reality is more than just our world. 
whether or not they are our enemies or our foes, if Hadar consumes them, they will be irre irrevocably destroyed forever. Any souls that Hadar consumes before the star seed can save them will be lost. It is a contingency, a last hope. That is all I can offer. Still better than nothing. That is what it is meant to be. Could you provide for the bird brains out there just a summary of the capability of the star seed? What it will retain? Is it just historical records or is it no. life itself? It is, it is difficult to explain exactly. It will hold the essence of Aroes and it is connected to the afterlife where Kalara takes our dead. The idea of it is that it will contain Eros's history, our culture, our knowledge, memories of people, of places, of things. It will also act as a beacon that should the worst come to pass and Hadar consumes this world, before the web of eternity is cut off from Eros, as I know certain individuals intend to do so, I will launch the star seed through the Genesis well, where it will seek out a new reality. The star seed will act as a beacon, calling the departed souls to it, where it will house them. It will also be made to survive such a journey. Traveling between realities normally cannot is not possible. Most of the construction is to create a, a device that is capable of travel in that regard. And it will be usable by other divine powers. My understanding of Sia of Mother's magic, other divines would be able to use the star seed to bring back those it has within it, but also to perhaps conjure up replicants of places, of things, of people. It would be able to reshape parts of a world into ours. If it is discovered by another divine. If mortals discover it, they will be able to have access to our knowledge, what we have learned, everything we know. Stories, tales, our history. We will live on in that way. Can only Kalara add souls to it? Even now, Kalara has stopped adding souls to the afterlife, but any who can journey into Eros's afterlife will be called to it. So if I were to add a guardian, for example, could I? It is possible. I do not know exactly how your own magic and existence will tie to this. My powers are limited to what Siaska has given me. My connection is here on Eros. Your matrix is beyond our world. It came from another reality as well. Uh, I do not know, Sentry. I do not know. Likewise, for anyone who is not born on Eros, who is not bonded to Eros, I cannot speak for what will happen to them either. Hmm. I can do only what I can. Hmm. Well, well it is a grim project to construct something as a gift for an Eroes reborn, one that we would never see. Yeah. Um, but it makes sense. If we aren't able to do what we intend to do, then at least encapsulate everything that we are as a gift for someone to use. As a warning, maybe, against Hadar, um, or even just the technology. If you help me with this, I will join Siaska gladly. This is my last task. I did not wish to leave this world with her, uh, her requests unfulfilled. Then we'll do our best. Very well. Under your guidance. She reached out her hand. Bala, come. Uh, and yeah. take what positions you will. I cannot tell you how this will begin, nor tell you how things will progress. You must make your best estimations as you can. Uh, Max turns to the rest of you and says, I will not be able to assist her ladyship 
while she is doing this. So I met your call. I guess we have to decide who's going to which pillar, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not smart and I'm not magic. And I really don't know what I can give here, guys. I'm gonna be Spirit honest. Spirit connection and hope. Mm. Can we have a there will also be tasks. We will call. I will call out one foci at a time. In between infusing the foci, there will be other things that must be done. Oh God! So, out of character, yeah. just to give you a rundown, yep. the way it's going to work is Valena is going to be making the star seed. Mm-hmm. As she does that, things may happen that she might need help with, or you guys need to deal with because it's going to mess you guys up, right? Mm. When she can, she will call out a foci. By the end, by the start of her next turn, you have to infuse it, and that means you have to touch it, and there will be a thing involved, right? Right. Um, I'm just because there's a lot of law, but now I'm trying to get the mechanics for you guys so you understand it, right? Yeah. So yeah, Valena will always act first in the initiative. She will always be at the top of the initiative, right? Mm-hmm. She will begin to when she'll try and construct the thing. There will normally be an event that takes place, or there might be a thing that happens. And then once she's finished that, she can basically call out a foci. You then go and infuse that foci before she takes another turn. If you don't do that, it fails. There will be a consequence, and she can only handle so many failures. Right? Uh, Valena will tell you in character. Like in character, she basically says she can only allow. I think up to. F- um, in fact, I'm not going to say how many because mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, but she says she can only handle a handful of failures. Yeah. Um, Very well. Uh, but we've got so, no idea what we're actually going to be doing. Doing. No. <laughs> um, okay. But there will be event. There will be things that you have to do. So you might want to have one person at each foci. You could do that. You might want to have you. You might want to like come up with it. Like have you all gathered in the middle and then you jump to things as you need them. Yeah. Um, but when somebody does successfully infuse a foci, they must remain next to it. If you leave that foci, it will become uninfused, and you will have to do it again. Is that an automatic failure then, or uh, it would count or as just an automatic? Restart? It would count as an automatic well, failure, and you've got to redo it again. Okay. Yeah. Did she say there was an order we had to do them all in? As yes, well? she will call out the order. Like you don't have to worry about that. It is memory, uh, magic, spirit, knowledge, connection, hope, and when it goes, uh, memory is the one on her left in the in the gated uh, left hand side. Yep. Magic is the one at the end of the bridge. Um, Spirit is the one on the broken uh, uh, area, the kind of like broken section. Um, knowledge is the one onto her right in the gated section. Uh, connection is the one behind her, um, beyond the forge. Um, and then hope is the one is basically embedded into the ceiling. It's kind of like a hanging down from the ceiling kind of thing. Um, there is a platform there, but it is very thin. It's like connected by a bunch of chains up to the ceiling. Uh, which there isn't a ceiling, so it's sort of just hovering there. Mm. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, Finally written it down. Yeah. I'm and, doing it. Uh, the other thing I will tell you, mechanically, Valor uh, will have her own initiative. Um, and Valor will tell you this, and she'll just say, I don't know what's going to be involved in me. If I am capable, I will aid you in whatever way I can, if I am able to. Uh, there are a few things I might be able to do. I can create portals. Uh, to link a space, two spaces together to allow you to travel <gasps> quickly. I that. That's I learned it from you, Nova. Um, I will also, <laughs> I will be able to uh, enhance time around one of you, um, allowing you to act. It will basically give you the haste spell. Oh, amazing! Uh, so you get an extra action. Uh, it won't increase your movement speed, but it will give you an extra action yeah. uh, each round. And then finally, I will be able to give you a moat of my divine sort of luck. Um, that will help you with tasks, and that's basically a re-roll on an ability check or a saving throw. Okay. Um, but to do that, Valor has to make a saving throw on her turn. If she fails it, she can't help you. She's so focused on doing this thing. Her if she choice. succeeds, any one of you at any time can basically be like, Valor, portal, and then she'll make the portal, right? So it's, it's like a, you get a power if she makes a saving throw. Just call on her. Yeah. You. And I'll remind you of those things. If you just be like, what does Valor do again? I'll be like, blah, 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 blah. She can do these two things. Okay. Um, but it's big, it basically becomes a free power for you uh, that you can do. All right? All right. Yeah. We're just, we're, we're just forging a new Aroas. Uh, sort of. Kind of. Like a little, um, what do they call it? Time capsule. A time, time capsule. In a Arecibo record? Is that what it is? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Gonna say goodbye to the past to make a new future. Bam. Oh, I like <laughs> that. Um, all right. Any out of character questions? 
Nay. Where do we need to be? Oh, are we actually underwater right now? I guess no, we're just... No, this is a stone yeah. chamber. It's just like normal air. We're just walking um, around like normal. Great. Yeah, so I will just... That's the first thing you said. Yeah, yeah that was so long ago. <laughs> That's been a while, hasn't it? Um, 20 minutes. I guess, I guess we'll just stand somewhere in the middle, right? Are we going to designate people to particular tasks? Because... Yeah. Yeah, there's quite um, a lot of distance uh, to cover. I'm going to say, if we, 50, you got 50 minutes to basically figure out what you want to do. We'll go to break, and then when we come back from break, we'll actually, we'll actually start off. the task. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Sounds good. All yeah. right, who wants to do memory? That was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think that should be Nova, because you technically have Tiangong like, inside you as well. I kind of feel that's more... Although it could be like Sentry as well, because Sentry has the memory of. I, the... I can tell you what the like Valina will give you a bit more information on each foci as well. Yeah. That would be useful. That'd be useful. Yeah. yeah. So memory is the memory of people, places, the moments and stories. Not scientific knowledge, but lived experience. That sounds like Guardians to me. Right. It's kind of Guardians. So, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll read them out. Yeah. Magic, the power and wonder of magic, divine and arcane. The moat of possibility that magic creates. You want to double bird that thing? We can double bird that thing. We'll double bird that thing. You can't double bird can't it, double but yeah, sure. No, can't double bird it? Yeah, it's one, one person. <laughs> one I'll person be thinking of you. Yeah. I think your knowledge. <laughs> spirit. Knowledge. Oh, shit. Uh, spirit is courage, determination, strength, willpower, our long struggles in battle and adversity. That's Nova yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, <laughs> with yeah. my minus two strength. Knowledge. <laughs> Facts, figures, data, instructions, timelines, history, and collected lore. Shit. I that could mean. be either of you, to mm. be fair. Well, I've also got the tome of knowledge. <laughs> well, yeah, that's uh, hopefully... Connection, bonds between people, emotive connections to the living and the dead, the power of unity. Oh, that could be guardian. Who is that, that sounds like guardian -y. He's What's pretty Max? Guardian Max can help us. Max well, can help out. True, yeah. yeah. Uh, he won't know anything about this place though, so that's, yeah, memories so are out of the question. I, I would, I, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. There's, there's six foci. And there's only five of you. Um, Max is going to have to help out on one. Uh, yeah. But uh, and then finally, hope. The hope for the future. Small hopes, dreams, wishes. Mm. Valor. Good Moments of hope. Yeah, Valor is, and Valor. Valor is oh, bound do doing this. I wish all of us were birdies. <laughs> No. <laughs> Get that bird away. Put that in the star seed. Yeah, sure. Damn. They were all birds. <laughs> Can you imagine if you said, I wish we were all birdies instead of just... Oh, myself. my God, I'd be furious. I can't think of it. Mm, I would be mad at it. <laughs> well, someone has, be mad someone at it. has someone did art. the art. Yeah. yeah, and I'm a little blue jay. It's so cute. Well, yeah, yes, I'm an eagle. Yeah. Would that have, Would that have uh, repaired my arm if he'd done that? Um, I don't even know why we're talking about yeah, it. it didn't no, happen. No, no. You got um, you got bigger worries at the minute. Yeah, we do. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'm pretty solid on magic. Yeah, yeah. I I'm think yeah. probably spirit. I think I'm Spirit's locked done. into knowledge. It's just the connections, the memory and hope, hope and memory that need to be allocated. All right, which one is more century? Connection, hope, or memory? Because she's all three, really. Mm. I think hope. Hope. Like, you're the most hopeful out of all of us. You did also restore, like, the entire Guardian race uh, to, to lead them into the future. That is the most hopeful thing any of us have done. <laughs> yeah. uh, the other thing I would say is, don't forget, Max is going to have to do one of these, and, like, he, uh, there's certain things that he's probably, like, he has, like, no connection to not Arois. He doesn't have any knowledge about Arois. Mm. Um, you got to think who Max is as a person Hey, Max, as well. how hopeful are you feeling about the future? He just kind of frowns, like, <laughs> I mean, it's not my world. I don't really know. Okay. This is your reality, though. Yes, but it, this seems to be very dedicated to your world. I'm really not sure. Hmm. I mean, That's true. if it was not, I know, I understand Alo is, is likely the most one, but, I mean, battle and courage, yes, I, I understand those things. I have some knowledge of magic. I know magic quite well, coming from Gideon Prime, but um, I'm afraid the rest, I'm, I'm not sure if I will be much use. I mean, he can do spirit and I can do something else. Connection, maybe? What was connection again? Connection is bonds between people, emotive connections to the living and the dead, the power of unity. Mm, How about really... another one? Um, <laughs> I mean... No, I'm not. How hopeful enough. do you feel about the future, Ayla? You're going to smack the shit out of it, aren't you? I mean, memory as well. Memory could... Ayla could do memory. Yeah, I could do memory. I do have weird flashbacks of 
Memory, mm -hmm. I, like memory, is is kind of very general. It's it seems to just be about sort of yeah your lived experiences, like the small mm -hmm. stories of the world, right? Not just yeah. like the the knowledge in books, but like the places, the people, the faces. Like mm -hmm. you're pretty I mean, also, well traveled. You, yeah, yeah, you also have some tied connection, not not to link you to connection, but you have some link to a old version of you from. Yeah. Like... No, that's what I'm saying. It, I could do memory. It just means that that's up first, and I'm out of the fight. That well, yeah, yeah. You, Which you is why, uh, yeah. The so if you hmm. need some strength, I might not be. You could. I mean, Max might say like, I mean, I have some memories that since I've arrived here on Arois, I, I could try, but. I don't think it would be as strong, would it? Do you feel emotional connections with us? No. Yeah, no. I feel I'm, a, I'm protective of her, her ladyship, but. What about your connection mm. to Vala? Yeah. She is. It is possible. You are her protector. Is that what will be asked of Max, though? One specific connection? You don't know. And even Valena doesn't know exactly what's going to happen when mm. you try and infuse these folk. You probably need someone more versatile. Spirit is probably the one that he is. Yeah. Best, best shot. Yeah. If we're to reallocate you, <laughs> mm -hmm. considering connection, knowledge, and hope. Not up there in your top three. How do Battle and spirit. It? That is something I know very well, yes. Valor, where do you see yourself? I uh, think that I'm needed here, Lucius. She I can't, don't think she I can't do help. it. I think I'm going to be needed in the construction. Yeah, it's basically five of us so, and then one where we... What speaks to you the Connection most and hope is what we have. Hmm. Connection with your matrix or hope at the future? Oh, it's difficult. Like ways, you can also just see like what the scenario is like. Mm -hmm. you, you might not be able to send the people you want to the thing you want because of other stuff going on. Like there might be. We could just know. leave the the last three open. I feel like Sentry is probably the only one that she's got spirits and dead. Yeah. She's the only one with that. So maybe Nova fits You've better. Been dead. For... Oh yeah, I have. <laughs> that was terrifying. Vanilla technically brought you back. Mm. It's a good connection there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. So wait, where's where is Nova again? Hope. Maybe Hope. Hope. Uh, I guess I hope. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you, yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> I'm not gonna shut my mouth. I hope to travel to the stars and see Thalia again. I hope yeah. to see Ganesh. Mm. I hope to see Wharton Sarfried. I don't I mean hope. to diminish the hopes, but in. I mean, the grand scheme of an entire civilization's uh, posterity. Uh, a hope to see someone in space might not be enough. Well, you did cut me off before I got to the real smushy stuff. Go for the smushy. I hope that you survive, Quill. That's not smushy. I hope I survive. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I, maybe it's best to see and act on a whim when it feels right to you Go to it. Yeah. You guys want to position yourselves on the map? Yeah, I mean, I'll nudge towards no ledge. Uh, yep. I can't remember which one's which. Oh, brilliantly. Magic. and Hope are very far away from each other. Oh. So. Sorry, Sandry. Oh, sorry, Sandry. <laughs> I'm very top-heavy. Oh, oh, God, Lucian's down. <laughs> we could nudge each other around it during the break, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, do you want to be actually, like, up here next to the knowledge sort of column quill, or do you want to be sort of still on the central Still, platform? I think, yeah, I'll stick to the central tile, just in case, yeah. like, I've got no idea what's going to happen when so she Lucia, activates it. I'll be at the base of this the bridge, bridge, right? That leads yeah. to it. Okay, Ayla, where do you want Where's memory? Uh, memory is... the first one, so that's this one over here. Oh, yeah, I'll stay in the middle there, in yeah. Yep. Nova? Hope is up on the ceiling. Yeah. Hope and the other one are real far apart from each other. Um... Oh, yeah. Remember, we might get a portal from Valor. That's true. Yeah, I'll go back to maybe the connection one. Gonna go behind? I'll go behind, yeah. He was spirit. Spirit was this one over here. Okay. We're kind of... sad that I don't get spirit. Yeah, I'll go back, yeah. Sounds fun. It's not that you don't have spirit, it's that Max... I'll in the middle, because I can... Well, yeah, it's directly up as well. I can dimension door and stuff like that. So the actual... There is a platform to stand on, and it is directly above the anvil. Yeah, also, Valor could... Uh, throw you up there as well, I guess. Yeah, if she makes if a saving throw. Gravity thrust. If oh, good. Makes... You can start oscillating up there. <laughs> <laughs> you can also just levitate, dude. You've levitated. I know. It's too slow. <laughs> Not good it's enough. Not style. Um, all right. 
Okay. <laughs> Well, in that case, let's take break a little. It's five minutes. In fact, it's perfect. Perfect time. We're going to take... Uh, we're going to end this part here. <laughs> Join us for the next part. See you then. See ya. Bye. See ya. See ya. Hello and welcome to part two of this episode of High Rollers. We join the party as they are now in the final forge. Uh, Valena's demi-plane where she is completing two tasks set to her by her mother Siaska before she ascends and rejoins the, the, the divine spirit of Siaska. And to do so, she has incorporated the party to help her, um, in which they need to uh, infuse six foci uh, to construct something called the Star Seed, a device that will basically house all the knowledge and memory um, and ideas and culture of Erois, as well as act as a beacon to call the souls of the dead to a brand new world or reality, should our heroes fail and Hadar consumes all. Um, and that is pretty much where we are. The party have made their plan mm -hmm. as much as they can, but we are going to be jumping pretty much into it. Yeah, uh, let's solve memory, magic, spirit, knowledge, connection, and hope. He's got it. All at the same time. Go nope, one at a time, uh, but we're going to do it. Hey, I would like everybody to roll initiative, because we are going to resolve this in initiative order. Yeah, all right, boom. The... Hell yeah, huge. All right, I'm going to do this in my order. Lucius. Uh, five. Wonderful. <laughs> Quill. Six. Whoa! Wow. Wow. Ayla. 22. One more. 22. Sentry. 14. Uh, and Nova. 13. And I should have... <laughs> that bird <Yes>. speed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, the forge falls quiet as Valena places a sort of silvery sphere on the forge itself wrapped in bands of mithril and adamantine, carved with intricate runes, um, and she pulls a hammer, and you see it begin to become infused with magical energy. And rather than striking the device as it is, she said seems to just channel raw divine power into this thing. Um, and the forging process is going to begin. Um, and because this is on, so Valena begins every combat, and the way it works is that she has to either uh, advance the construction. Um, if she completes and advance the construction, then next turn she can uh, she can begin to infuse one of the foci, right? Um, and to advance the construction, uh, she will need aid uh, as a task must be completed. Uh, let us roll a d10 for which task. Okay. Uh, okay, so as she begins calling it, you see uh, the flames behind her, these kind of roaring furnace flames in the section behind her, and you can see them on the map just either side of this platform that leads up to one of the, uh, the foci. Um, the flames begin to grow wild and, and too hot, and Valena calls out, Heroes, the furnace must be cooled. Find a way to cool the flames. Uh, and that is going to be your task. Oh. I will out of character tell you, you need to deal more than 20, at least 20 points of cold damage, but no more than 30 points of cold damage. Oh, you want to overcool it? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. There is, and she will point at Vanilla calls out, there are pipes connected that if you must, if you do not have access to a way, they will, they will be able to cool the furnace. Uh, but you will need some engineering to understand it, or deft hands. Uh, there are pipes on either side. Somebody can use intelligence or dexterity to try and use those to cool it down if necessary. Um, but that task must be completed by the beginning of Elena's next turn in order to attempt infusing an Infoci. I okay. think I can do this. All right. Well, Ayla, you were up first. So we're going to go through an initiative order because there are some various things. Um, How much damage? Is it two separate flames that need both? Not, no. Or just, is it just, just one, one of them. Thing? Yeah, it's okay. one thing. I've put um, two flames to make it look cool and symmetrical, but it is just one okay. furnace. I can try and use dexterity to... Use these pipes? Yeah, yeah to yeah, try sure. and do that. Yep. Do you want to move over? Yeah. Please, okay. I've got 45 feet, so I'm going to be fine. 15, 20, 25. 
30, easily within range. Uh, and yeah, you see that there is these complex series of chains and they're connected almost like a pipe organ. These pipes lead into the furnace. Um, looking at it, you quickly realize, ah, uh, I'm not going to be smart enough to figure out what these do and like how much water. So instead, it's a dexterity thing to see if you can cut it off when you need to, like basically have the reaction speed to do it. Uh, so this is just a straight dexterity ability check. So this is just uh, d20 plus pr uh, your dex, basically. Okay. Uh, 15 plus 5, 20. <laughs> which is exactly what you needed. Uh, so you watch as Ayla kind of rushes up, um, she begins pulling on these chains, and water begins to pour onto the furnace, and slowly over time it begins to cool, uh, and Vayner is like, that's it, well done Ayla, and you, she begins channeling the, the energy back into it, basically. Um, so now you have like time on your initiatives to kind of like, right, let's make plans, cast spells, do things in preparation. Again, I'm gonna remind you, like things like, if you wanna cast like boosting spells and stuff like that, that might be valuable. I'm going to move 10 feet back yep. towards just, yeah, so that, thank you, with my remaining yep. movement. And I'll, kind of I will next rage to Valena herself. just in case. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you begin, the yeah. lightning begins coursing over your body, arcing up and down your, your skin um, as you feel that rage, that storm swell within you. Uh, Valor is going to attempt her saving throw to see if she can aid you this turn. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you see Valor is immediately overwhelmed. Like, she is, like, concentrating so hard on this thing. I, my friends, I'm sorry, I don't think I can, I can help you right now. Um, and she's just focusing on what she's doing. So unfortunately, you do not get Valor's special power this turn. Um, we then go to Maximilian, who will look around. Uh, I can attempt to jump over to where I'm needed, but should I remain here? What do you want me to do? Yes, be prepared here, just in case you need it, because you're quite late in the queue, I think. Very well. Um, in that case, he will... Uh, just not sure what else might come up, he will cast Shield of Faith on himself. So he will just boost his AC in case something is needed for that. All right, Sentry. Um, Sentry will, uh, bonus action, raise Starbreaker and call it forth. Okay. Get that ready. <laughs> so the lance grows, uh, doubles in size and length, and the spiraling green energy surrounds it. And there's an action, she'll cast Aura of Vitality, so I can bonus action heal 2d6 to any one of them 30 feet. Nice. All right, and done, no movement. That's, you want to stay where you are? Stay where I am, yeah. All Just right, ready. Nova Vija. Um, I'm going to bonus action summon Tian Gong um, so that they're ready for um, combat. Well, not combat, but, you know, helping out. Okay. Uh, um, down. I think... Um, I was just wondering whether or not to cast Fly on myself, but I've only got two crummy little spell slots now, so is that a good idea? Hmm... Uh, after this, by the way, we have Quill and Lucius. Sod it, I'm going to cast Fly on myself, so I'm ready All right. to okay. rumble. You have Fly on yourself. I don't think I have enough spell like spell level to cast it on anyone else, so... Okay. Yeah, it's just me. Uh, there is no event currently, uh, as nothing has gone wrong, um, so we go to Quill. Nice. Uh, well, I'm going to bonus action cast Expeditious Retreat on myself. Okay. Uh, so that I can get zoom in. And... Uh, so, so the one she's about to activate is memory, right? I believe so. Which is uh, this one on the left-hand side in like a gated yeah. area. Your job. In which case, I will uh, give you. I mean, I have to fly over to you, but um, I will give you guidance. So I'm Ooh. double concentrating. So my boy Elder Quill. So is that a bonus action to summon him? Because you just bonus action expeditious retreat. I. Huh. <laughs> I believe it is. Uh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. what do you want to do? Uh, Gain inspiration there, Mark. Huh? Gain inspiration there. Thanks, Chris Trot. <laughs> well <Okay>. done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that case, I will just not. <laughs> All right. I'm not giving you guidance. Okay. Ever. All right. Thanks, bud. Uh, in that case, I won't fly over to her. Okay. And I will retcon basically my entire turn. I have oh, expeditious from... retreat. Right, yep. Okay. That's my turn. That's you. Okay, you're done. <laughs> Lucius. There's not much I can do right now. Um, I'm going to try and use my wings and see if I can fly just up and down. As a uh, preparatory, like, yeah, you kind of, am like, I capable of you this? You, like, hop. <laughs> and you kind of, I imagine that yeah, you would, like, sort of flap your arms and things like that. And it might be a bad time to try this. You sort of hover for a moment and then, like, you kind of lose the grip of everything. Okay, not, yeah, not yet. Yeah, but maybe with some practice, maybe. Um, um, I'm going to cast 
preemptively absorb elements fire on it's my reaction. You can only cast it okay. as a reaction. You can say I'm gonna hold my action if I take fire damage I'll cast, but it's a reaction anyway. So it's making an assumption. The the forges are cooled enough, right? Seems to be. Yeah, yeah. But Valena called out and said, Yeah, well done. Doesn't seem to be like the flames seem to be under control. Yep, I'll just ready in action. If I if it looks like Ayla needs aid, I'll run in that direction. Okay. And cut so you'll just aid. spend your movement to dash in that direction, yeah. basically. All right. Okay. Well, we go to a brand new round of Valena having success with the task being completed. She will say, very well. We must now infuse the memory foci. Hello. Begin. <laughs> uh, and she will call out. And yeah, you have until the start of Valena's turn to infuse this foci. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Uh, we'll move to the full cast. All right, so... Ayla then goes 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40... 45. 45, bam, done. Right there. Um, you get right there. So, when you arrive at it, I mean, you know that you have to touch it. Valerian said that you basically, it's an action to infuse, right? You have to spend your action to, in, in, to, to do so. You touch this column, this kind of pulsing light, almost embedded in it, like a cracked gemstone, sort of in the heart of the column. And your vision begins to swim and you suddenly find yourself no longer in the forge. Mentally, you find yourself in a open space. Uh, and just a request, you feel this, this request, not from a person, but just from existence. For this, to infuse this foci, what you must do is, uh, let me just get my notes here. Um, as Ayla, this isn't Katie, but as Ayla, this is, Ayla has to describe and share a memory of an event or an Erois which encapsulates this foci. So something about the small memories, the places, the faces, the people, something that is human, something that is not knowledge or anything bigger, but something very personal from the character's point of view and what it means to Ayla, right? And you are basically investing that as Ayla into this foci. I will think back to the time when I was at the Erdyth clan mm -hmm. and the moment that they gave, they gifted me with the Howling Gale, mm -hmm. as it was then, and explained that it how important it was to the clan and that in... Ayla knew she didn't belong with that clan, and to look for answers for that, she had to leave. And they accepted that, and they still gave her this heirloom to remember them and to represent them, even though they weren't her true clan. Mm. And she took that hammer with her, and that's why she'll only fight with that. She will defend Erois with that, because that's what erosions do they defend their people. Okay. So I think with this then, I think that what I would like you to make a check with is, because of the nature of it being this weapon that you fought with, and although this is, you know, the memory of the smaller things, it's gonna make it a bit harder um, as the sort of alliances of the, the nature of the foci and the memory don't quite match up, but Make a strength ability score. So this is just d20 plus your strength modifier. Um, Edger, we'll see how this goes. Uh, 16 plus 7. Okay. You realize as you're kind of regaling, as Ayla is regaling this story, as you're telling this and you're conjuring this memory, whilst you had this intention of, of the hammer and the battles, it's actually the faces of the Erdyth clan. It's their names, it's the way they would go hunting, it's the places, their homes, it's that journey that you have taken. And, and even though you have this memory of like the hammer and the battles, it's the places like Rose Hall and Arval and these sort of more smaller memories that kind of actually you feel yourself almost not being taken from you, but coming from you, almost flowing from you. It's the feel of the hammer. It's not It's not the way you used it, but it's the sensation of the leather under your grip. It's the tartan that you carry with your friends. These things mingle together. 
and you feel something lock into place, like a sudden shift of the ground, and your mind returns to the forge that you now find yourself in. And there is a glowing line connecting this gemstone to you, um, and you have successfully infused it, uh, mm. this foci. Yeah, I think Ella was thinking more like, this mm. has been with me from here. Mm all the way and she's learned so much on this journey with this yes. one item that it I think that's what it to. locks into, right? Like it's like the yeah, like the, the the faces and the people and like the the you know, the journey that that hammer has taken specifically. Um, and that's for you guys. Uh, so Ayla kind of comes out of it and that's what you sense. Um, and yeah, you do see this like light now connecting them. Um, and that column is almost radiant in its in its glow. Uh, and Valian will say, that is memory, has been infused into the seed. Yes. Now we must continue. Oh, good. Uh, I think it worked. There's a weird line. I'm just going to stay here, just I guess. Gonna, uh, okay. Great job. job. You got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Vala, sort of encouraged by your success, is like, okay, I think, I think I've got this. If you need my help, call for it. And she basically pulls one of her hands free and you can see that purple magic that she casts a spell that is available. So Avala's abilities are now available to use. Awesome. Um, Maximilian will uh, just look around and sort of any direction for Max. Otherwise, it, he is just going to remain where you've sort of told him to. Uh, I'm yeah. going to ask him to stay where he is for now, I think. Actually, okay. maybe come a little bit closer to Nova for, for what I want to do on my turn. <laughs> or like five feet or... Uh, ten, ten feet, yeah. Yep, yep. He will just... He was like, if that is what you wish, kill it. And then he will back up towards Nova. Yeah. Uh, Sentry. Um, I think Sentry will just remain where she is for now. Yep. Um, Action. I could, I could, I could enlarge. Yeah. And get big. You want to get big? <laughs> and biggen. I shall embiggen. I need to get a big sentry. I don't have a big yeah. sentry. But, well, like uh, a whole yeah. cluster mini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will envision that you are big. Uh, so you have enlarged yourself at this point. Uh, so you swell in size. Um, Nova Vija. Uh, I'm gonna call out to Ayla and be like, "What did you have to do?" Uh, think about a memory? You just remembered me of something. So when you have completed the infusion, your strength is reduced by two. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Is that temporary? You don't know. I fucking right, hope you, right now, you don't know, but your strength uh, is currently reduced by two. Oh, okay, no, it's 23. Oh. Look. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, continue. What did you have to do? What? I don't know how to edit it. I'll just remember that. Yeah. What? Okay. I think it's like a temporary uh, Billy damage. Yeah, I can't figure out. Um, I did, thought of a thing, memory, and kind of just, mm, it seemed to take it as yay. Uh, I just thought of a thing. Okay. Sorry. Nova. Actions, moves, bonus <laughs> actions. <laughs> You asked the you asked the wrong person to explain what happened. It's fine. I've got like three more people before it gets to vaguely my turn. Um, yeah, I I'm, don't know. I'm not gonna do anything. All right, I'm just, just gonna yeah. just gonna, just, just take, take. I knowledge. guess like ready an action that oh. I don't even know what. Like you know if, if yeah I don't, I don't really I guess to move towards the next thing that needs doing. I don't know if that's too vague, but well, my action will be to move towards the next task. Okay. Uh, all right. After Nova's turn, power pulses through the forge. Uh -oh. Now that the first foci has been infused, you begin to feel that this is an incredible amount of magical energy, and that will have repercussions. <clears throat> All of you... Uh, are dead. Is anybody flying currently? I've got fly on me, but I'm not, not flying. flying up in the air? Yeah. Quill, you didn't because you cast it, but you didn't end up flying, did you? Uh, I don't need to cast it, yeah. but I'm on the ground, firmly planted. You're on the ground. All of you feel this crushing weight on your shoulders as gravity in the forge dramatically increases. Uh, any flying creatures would fall prone immediately. Every creature in the forge has half their speed. You all take 10 force damage at the start of your turn. Oh, so okay. it's at the start of your turn. Okay. Oh, good thing I did Expeditious um, Retreat. <laughs> and you feel like Felina, like, ah! We will must try and complete these tasks. That should hopefully alleviate 
some of the discrepancies in the forge. Um, but uh, we then go to Quill. So please take your 10 force damage. Uh, which is your speed is halved currently. Speed is halved. And can, I guess I can't fly. You cannot fly currently. Okay, let me just do a concentration on my expeditious uh, 14. So yeah, you're fine. Yeah, that would yeah, be fine. Yeah, DC 10 minimum. Uh, that's annoying because I can now move 15 feet, which is not very far. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, yeah. Um, well, wait, what does that expeditious? Does that not give you double? It's a bonus action, but I want to bring out my boy. Oh, right. Okay. Um, bring out the boy. I'll bring out my boy. <laughs> the pump. My okay. elden boy. I don't have any. Uh, it's just a ghost, it doesn't matter. He's a ghost, doesn't matter. Yeah, um, and I want to... Yeah, I'm going to nudge towards the guys, and I'll do that in a sec, uh, and I want to cast... 15? Yeah. Um, and I want to capture everyone in my beacon of hope. All right. So bonus action, boy. Action, beacon. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't hit Ayla. All right, so Ayla's the only one who doesn't get it. Uh, too far away, and we're heavy now. Done. <laughs> done. All right, Lucius, 10 force damage. Speed is halved. I'm going to move my way up the bridge. Yeah, so with struggling. With his gravity. I think what I'm going to have to do is dash this round. 15. Yeah, do you want to action dash? Yeah. Five, 10, and then be ready, because she hasn't Thanks. called out. She hasn't called yeah, it out yet. Yeah. You're, like, reaching towards it, and you're, like, you're like, <sighs> like, every step is this agonizing kind of, like, thud as this gravity is pressing down on you. Um, but, yeah, she hasn't. In fact, she won't be able to call it out yet, because she needs to complete more advancement on the... Uh, on the... I think I'm in position. Does anyone else feel really heavy? Very heavy. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, as as you are doing this, um, this would be. <clears throat> uh, you see, as Valena is kind of channeling, she now pulls out sort of a chisel, and you begin to see more runes begin to like magically etch themselves on the the seed itself. Um, but as she does so, a uh, crack kind of erupts through the anvil itself. Um, and Felino, like, champions, you must fix the anvil in whatever means you can find. Um, and that is the task. And Ayla can't move, and Lucius is too far away, probably. This is what I said. Man yeah. Said first. Uh, how the hell do we fix that? Ooh. That's a great question. Uh, that it must be completed before... Valina's next turn. Ayla. Wait. Uh, oh, okay. You are you you I mean you can still call out advice if you had any spells that would you would still be able to cast, but unfortunately you cannot move unless you wish to break this infusion. Um I don't think you I have anything a bit limited, I think. That would be useful to anyone. But I will just go, Sentry's big! Sentry can fix it! <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I will, as, as a little reminder as well, call out that Vala has her abilities. Uh, it's her turn next, and she'll have to make the saving throw again to see if she can do that. So, uh, Very well. All right. So uh, Vala's turn next. I'll make a saving throw. Unfortunately, she fails, and uh, as that cracks, she's just like, ah, and she has to bring her hand back in and can no longer offer assistance. Um, Maximilian uh, will look at you, Nova, um, and the anvil is made of metal, and he'll say, I think I can heat it. I could probably heat it with some of my fire magic, and that might be able to make it easier to mend. Yeah, go All for right. it. Yeah. I, I, I can I can fix it with Tiangong. Do you not want... I can, should I not go? Go towards your, t your pillar. All right. You will move towards this pillar. And that is his turn. Uh, he takes his 10 damage as well. Oh, I didn't take my 10 yeah, damage. Yeah, if you can take your 10 force damage, please, as well. Sentry, 10 force damage, and your yep. turn. Roll concentration on the Beacon of Hope. That's it's DC 10. 5, that goes. Uh, well, add your constitution save. Oh, yeah. Through. I'm almost certain that you shouldn't be failing that. Oh, yeah, 12. Yeah, you should be right. Nice. Were you at Beacon of Hope as well? Yeah. Beacon of Vitality. Uh, or of Vitality, sorry. Cool. The 2d6. I will yeah. run over to the forge. Can I like hold it together? So you can go 5, cool. 10, 15. Um, it's going to be on sort of. Yeah, you're just about five feet away, unfortunately, to like actually touch it. Misty step the five feet? Yeah, you can bonus action misty step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Yep. So you kind of <clears throat> see this, and I mean, this is like metal. It has like a split down the seam of it. 
Um, so is your intent to sort of just push it together just kind hold of it thing? Together, yeah. Okay, yeah, make a uh, athletics check. This can be pretty hard though. Yeah. This is like solid metal, basically. Uh, five again. <laughs> uh, Fifteen. 15's not going to be anywhere close to like, this is like trying to push this huge chunk of metal Bugger. together as this crack is widening. You can see like every moment it's growing wider and wider. You're trying to hold it, but you're not sure if you're making it worse or, or even just stalling it. I can't hold it! Uh, Nova Vija. Ten points of damage, Tiangong's gone, right? Afraid so. Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> From the 30, gravity crushes Tiangong. From 30 foot away. I, actually, the way I'd like to see this is Tiangong vanishes back into me. My sword glows as I hold it up, mm -hmm. and I cast Creation on the anvil. Just Ooh. fill the Which seam. Creates, I can create mag, um, metal to mm. fill the seam. Amazing. Yeah. Great. Yeah, Perfect amazing. use of that spell. Uh, nice. Yeah, so you watch as like, it just fills with steel, like molten steel that then amazing. immediately hardens. Awesome. And as it does, essentially, you let go, power kind of rushes back into it. Um, you do all feel that pressure of the gravity falls away. Uh, that gravity nice. effect ends because oh, nice. you completed the task, um, and whoosh, it kind of comes back in. Um, I was just rolling for um, concentration on fly. I've cool. still got it. You've still got it. Great. Uh, so the anvil and light filling is like, ah, oh, good. I will attempt to, we can attempt to infuse the next foci in just a moment. And then she continues kind of like carving the runes up. But be ready, uh, she calls out. Uh, can I bonus action re-summon Tiangong? You can. <laughs> Where do you want Tiangong to go? Next to you? Uh, yeah, next to me. Sure. Next to you. Um, all right. Uh, Quill. Oh, God. Um, uh, I am just going to... I guess slow, nudge back to where I was before so I can, um, when needed, get towards the uh, knowledge moat. Sure. Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, nothing else? That's, yeah, that's all I really want to do. I don't want right. to burn any slots just yet. Uh, Lucius, uh, the, yeah, it's not been called out. Valena is not ready for you to infuse it just yet, unfortunately. I think what I'll do instead then, mm -hmm. with my gauntlet, mm -hmm. Can I cast a cantrip and then capture it in the gauntlet? Uh, a cantrip wouldn't help you because the, the gauntlet needs to absorb levels of spells. All right. A cantrip doesn't have them. I'll do a level. Two le level two. All right. So you cast out a level two spell and then immediately use your reaction to absorb it into your now wing-like gauntlet. I think that like the oh, wish yeah. would have changed it to fit it, um, but it is like this metallic peacock wing arm thing. Um, Epic. I keep yeah, forgetting so, he's a fucking peacock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember that throughout all of this, he's peacock. Ah, uh, look at this bird like, with his metal arm. Oh, you've got metal, you've got shared metal arms. <laughs> oh, oh, we could do couples. the Arnold Schwarzenegger like handshake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you cast the spell, Lucius. What, out of interest, any particular spell? I think what I do at level two is just a uh, chromatic orb. So you just fire like, a chromatic orb and then woof, immediately and then catch it and then yeah, bring it in. in. And the you magic gain the, equivalent you gain the charges. Of, like, I don't punch think you that, hand. that doesn't take you over the limit, so you don't have to worry about the same thing. Oh, it's do. empty. Yeah, at the okay, so, so you've got two charges. I'm thinking to orbit. fill it up, really. All right. Nice. Well, annoyingly, because of the way the initiative, Valena is like, she finishes carving these runes, um, and, you know, in the six seconds, she calls out and is just like, now the next magic, the next foci. Um, <laughs> oh. with you in a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's just the way it is. Um, Ayla, but feel free to just say like, "There's nothing I can." There's do. There's nothing I can do. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you got it, Lucius. Yeah, I mean, you can absolutely oh, give some cheerleading out. Uh, Vala does nope doesn't succeed. Uh, she is still definitely focused. Uh, I'm rolling really badly, unfortunately for her, um, as she's focused on the forging of the star seed. Uh, Maximilian. Will, looking over at Lucius, he can't really aid you in any way. Um, he will, uh, okay, as, as his bonus action, he will actually elect Quill as his royal guard. Uh, this won't unfortunately really help until he's next to you, um, but he basically like looks at you, Quill, and you see he just is like, if I can reach you, I will try and protect you, Kilek. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, well, he nobody really needs healing, so Max is just going to hold his position for the time being. Uh, sentry. 
Um, I will make my way back over to behind Velena towards the um, mm-hmm. connection moat, and I'll yeah. hold my position. There's about there's about fifteen twenty feet up in the air. By the way, the actual cool. bar- node behind her is like embedded into the wall. Nice. All right, Nova Vija. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold my action to yeah. move towards whatever task All he's right. doing next. The forge pulses once more. Another event will take place. Okay, so having cooled when Ayla cooled the furnace before, um, the furnace itself, the flames turn icy white, and the temperature in the forge rapidly decreases. Uh, everybody will be taking twenty cold damage at the start of their turn oh. as the temperature drops into this place. Yes, as an elemental adept, yep, of ice. Yep. Would I take half? Does it give you resistance? Yeah. No, it lets you ignore resistance. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Such a naughty boy. Such a naughty boy. <laughs> uh, if you have cold resistance in any other means, by all means, yeah, that would provide you with resistance. I know what I'll do. All right. I got it. All right. Uh, so yeah, the temperature like is dropping, and it's just like uh, until uh, we must uh, press on. Um, and she calls out. Uh, we then go to Quill. 20 points of cold damage, please. Oof. Owie, my bones. My cold, cold bones. Um, from where I See am... See Lucius, like, preparing to reach out to the foci. Yeah, I think I'll just keep, um... Everyone here topped up as best I can, so I'm going to do a mass cure wounds. Um, and since everyone has got Beacon of Hope, they're going to get max. Everyone maxed. but Ayla. Everyone but Ayla, but I can't reach Ayla anyway, I don't think. Oh, well, actually, 60 feet. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay, in that case, yeah, I'll just hit everyone. Uh, everyone gets max 3d8 plus 6. You get... 24 plus 6, 30, right? Uh, yeah. You get 9, 10, 16. It's garbage on that 3d8. So what do we get? We get... We get 30. Yeah, everyone gets 30. Yeah, they get 20, 19, whatever it was. I don't know, I've forgotten already. Okay, <laughs> all right. You done? I'm done. All right. Lucius, you're going to take 20 cold damage. Uh, can I absorb elements on that? Yep, you can use your reaction to cast absorb elements. I'll do that, and you then use resistance. my action mm-hmm. to, to infuse the foci. Infuse. Okay. Similar to Ayla, as you touch it, and you kind of try and connect with this, this thing, your mind, you suddenly find yourself in a sort of liminal space, this ongoing white space. You are actually back in your mind space. You are a high elf again. Uh, oh. You find yourself back in your high elf form okay. um, as you feel again this request, this this need to be shared with, to instill something of you here into the seed, uh, to use you as a conduit to connect to the the wider concept of magic in Erois. And so, very much like Ayla, I would like you, as Lucius, to describe or share a memory or event in Erois which encapsulates magic from your character's point of view and what it meant to your character. Wow, okay. I think Lucius will recall the moment that Valor revealed her potent power for the first time as the daughter of Siaska, that moment where the big purple energy just blasted out Mm-hmm. And that kind of disrupted all of our worlds, mm-hmm. as well as set us on the course to where we are today. Mm-hmm. So Lucius will recall that with, you know, very strong recollection, because it was a poignant moment and also just unveiled the true potential of such mm. a small person of Aroes. Mm. Okay, yeah, I like that. Um, so thinking about that with the way you've described it's it. untapped potential of all erosions, yeah. basically. Yeah, no, I like that. Can you make a charisma ability modifier for me then? Please? Oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> it does, the way that you described it ties into that very well. So it's just d20 plus your charisma modifier. No, just the mod. Just the modifier for charisma. Very well. That is a 19. 19. Your charisma is reduced by two but you do feel, again, that kind of locking sensation. Um, Your mind recalls, and you find yourself back in the forge as an Arakokra, Um, but again, you now have this kind of shimmering purple line of light connecting you to this column. Um, As you, yeah, you lock in, uh, and you feel that foci take place. Um, And yeah, Valena will call out and say, like, yes, 
We are growing closer. Two of them are complete. I fear that the forge may begin to grow more unstable. Uh, she will then resume her forging, this time bringing out various uh, sort of bands of metal, which with a gesture, they sort of hover in place over the seed and begin to rotate in various sort of patterns and mannerisms as they almost begin to speed up encircling the sphere. Um, as she does so, I need to roll on a toss. Uh, okay. So, uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Ayla, the foci around you that you're currently connected to begins to brim with energy. Uh, too much energy, radiant light. Valena will say, Ah, oh, Ayla's foci is growing too strong. You must transfer the energy from one of the foci to a, a, a region that is not near the anvil or another foci. You should be able to transfer it from person to person. Uh, you know, Ayla, uh, you, if you touch the foci, if any creature touches that foci that you're next to, uh, you will take some damage, um, but you can then, as an action, pass that damage to somebody else next to you, like with a touch, um, and you basically have to get this energy away from the anvil and any other foci, right? So you have to pass it between you to get there. Uh, so if my held action was to move towards the next task, does yeah. this count? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. So you can move 30 feet. Um, okay. Well, because I've got fly. Oh, that's true. I've yeah, got 60, 60 foot. So I'll can... uh, yeah, I'll touch the, the foci and I will... Well, yes, it, so it's then go to Ayla's turn. So you touch the foci. You're going to take some lightning damage. Uh, as Ooh, my favourite. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, sorry, it wasn't radiant energy. I just Tickle. meant to say lightning. What was the yeah. uh, cold damage, by the way? 20. It was 20. Yeah, it would be reduced. Oh, shit, cold damage. And then 20, 20. points of cold damage, yep, yeah, please. Uh, and then that's actually quite nice. 15, 21. Uh, 27 lightning damage, so half that to... 18. 18, thank you. Um, so as you touch it, you feel this lightning kind of course through your body, but you, as an action, can now basically touch somebody else and you'll pass it to them, this energy, basically. Okay. Uh, Nova has literally just flown in next to you. Um, I'll pass it to Nova. Okay. All right. um, Nova will get resistance because that's she's in my aura. Feet. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we go uh, 15, 22, so 11 lightning damage to Nova. Nova, you are now carrying that energy, and again, you can move and discharge it as an action. You can give it to somebody else. Cool. Did you just lose concentration on fire? Uh, I got 14 plus. You're fine. Three, so yeah, yeah fine. you're fine. All right. Uh, well, on her turn. Still, unfortunately, Dear. unable to. Yeah, she, I'm like like twos and threes. Every Would time. have been a useful time like, to have it. Yeah, partially. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Uh, Maximilian will kind of seeing Nova rush over and hearing this instruction. He's gonna move. Um, and. He will, he will basically ready an action to use his uh, healing flames uh, when you get within range of him. So like, if you're like, he sees that you're like carrying this lightning, so he will try and use that when he gets close to you. Uh, sentry, uh, he also will take the 20 points of cold damage. Um, sentry, 20 points of cold damage. Points. Um, can I? Uh... Five ten, do you want to, can I move up next to Nova and take some of the, the take the damage off Nova? Thank you. Okay, you can get next to her if you dash. Yeah, I'll dash. dash. Okay. So you like move next to Nova. Form a chain. Um, yep, and then on Nova's turn, she'll be she has to be on Nova's turn. She discharges it and passes it to you, right? Cool. So. Where does this need to go? Uh, somewhere away. away, yeah, you don't know the radius, away. but it needs to not hit another foci or the anvil. Um, oh. So you decide where you think that's going to be. Okay. Sentry, uh, you done? Um, I will bonus action healing word, uh, not healing word. Lay on hands? Uh, no. It's an action. Or a vitality. That's the one, yeah. Or a vitality, yep. On myself, indeed. Uh, well, you actually get max because of Beacon of Hope, right, yeah. Tom? So any healing. Yes, yeah. So you get 2 d You get 12. Max. You get max. All right, in that case, we then go to Nova Vija. Can I discharge it into the um, freezing fort, the freezing? You can try, you can try whatever you want. 
Because she said not the anvil, right? The foci and the anvil. Keep it away from other foci and the anvil. But the, the mishap that happened at the beginning of this was the forge start, the the, the fire mm -hmm. yeah, the two, started the, the burning. Fiery, the fiery sides of the furnace, yeah. I'm going to try. Can I discharge it into the fire? Okay, so you're going to fly to what, the nearest point? Yeah. So like, where do you want to go? like here or do you want to move closer yeah well how middle? how far do i it's a touch isn't it i mean you've got 60 foot of flight right yeah so, yeah you can go pretty much anywhere okay you want. yeah you have to go next to it basically yeah um oh and i take 20 points of damage you do take 20 points of cold damage uh and when you discharge it uh so the foci is about 20 feet up in the air yeah it's just if you kind of touch the edge of the furnace it just about misses like it comes close like there was about a 20 foot radius uh sort of eruption of this thing um <laughs> Yeah, it's just because I'm assuming you're actually like yeah, here. like and then it's about it. twenty feet up to this. Oh. So like you, like as you discharge it, it nearly catches the anvil and the foci, but just barely misses both mm -hmm. sides. Cool. Um, when you do, you do take the lightning damage again as well. Okay. Um, you don't have resistance this time, I don't think. Okay. Uh, 15, 12, 17. 24 points of lightning damage as you discharge it, but as it dis as it discharges the temperature in the room because it discharges Ooh. into a furnace the temperature also begins oh, to okay, stop cool. um, so the cold energy is now gone the lightning has been discharged and it's like ah yes now i can begin to focus i'll prepare the next foci be ready uh um, i rolled 19 on constitution statement uh, for concentration yep, even. you still find it's half damage or 10 so um can i also be like uh lucius what did you have to do um, I had to, again, like Ayla, think of a memory that is, encapsulates a rose and its magical potential. Great. <laughs> Just think of fun memories. It's fine. Try and make it connected to a rose in particular, and all of a rose. Can I reason on Tiangong again? <laughs> He's already there. He's already there. Yeah, yeah, but he would have taken. Uh, he would have taken. Oh, the cold damage. Oh, Back again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just resummon. Just die and live again. Them even. Uh, okay. Uh, oh no. So this is a. The next one is. Max. Spirit. Max. Spirit. Max time. Max needs to get moving. Max needs to move. Yes. Yes. He got uh, it. So. Okay. So after, um, as Nova discharges the lightning. Uh, and the, the temperature begins to fade. Um, a surge of magic pulses from the anvil. I need all of you to make charisma oh saving God. throws. Yay. Charisma. I got plus those. 11 on that. I think Ayla gets a plus I three needed it. <laughs> no, I rolled a two, I fail. Uh, I got a surprising amount of charisma. Not with that roll. DC 20. <laughs> Not with that roll. 21. 21. <laughs> Everybody else? 30. 30? Oh, okay. Total? What? Yeah. Damn. Uh, Max also fails. So, Lucius and Sentry, nothing happens. You feel this kind of pulse over you and nothing changes. The rest of you, uh, you don't, f you you feel suddenly quite heavy um, and slow, but you don't feel anything different until you see your skill, your, yourselves. Your bodies have become transformed into like a living metal. Uh -oh. uh, you now weigh 10 times your normal weight. Your speed is halved. You have disadvantage on weapon attacks. However, you deal double physical weapon damage uh -huh. um, and have okay. resistance to all damage except psychic. Uh, so you feel your body's kind of like <laughs> um, as your skin becomes this silvery, shiny metal. You just um, all became Colossus. I can't move metal anyway, Mario. so I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. chilling here. I was thinking metal chill. Mario. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Quill. Um, yeah. I mean, I, again, um, like way at the bottom of the initiative, everyone is solving problems before it even gets to me. Um, you solve the problem that Max waves. is too far away. <laughs> At the end of the initiative round. Well, I know. <laughs> um, there's no immediate threats right now. I mean, you, mm. yeah, I mean, you don't know if this metal thing is going to become a problem, but... How do we even get rid of that? I, yeah, I, uh, can I figure out some way? Because I don't want to dispel the anvil. Did Max say? Uh, no, it, it's, it would be... A, uh, no, Max didn't. Max is currently metal as well. Uh -oh. So his speed is half. Like, he's oh, like, fuck. Uh, yeah, Max... Max is a problem right now. Ah, uh, crap. All right. In that See, case, there's a problem for you to fix now. In that case, presuming this is a spell and that it is dispellable, um, I will uh, move 15 feet towards the anvil and towards everyone else as best as I can, and I'll pop another 
uh, mask your wounds. Okay. Um, so fifth level or lower, it will get dispelled. Fifth level? Doesn't affect it. Did I say fifth? You did. <laughs> I meant... No, nope, you said fifth. Nine. <laughs> so fifth level. Uh, so you, you, you restore the hit points, everybody gets the hit points back as normal. The spell takes effect, but the metal body transformation does not disappear with the Spellbreaker. Uh, so 30 healing again, and Ayla, you get... Uh, 10, 13, 90. Lucius, you're up next, but you're obviously locked down. But you can still cast spells, you can do other stuff. Anything you can think of, you can do, but yeah, you just can't move more than 10 feet from the, the foci. Uh, any done, Quill? Uh, that's me. All right, Lucius. Um, where I am right now, mm -hmm. I would like to cast Fly on Max, which is a touch spell I know. Mm -hmm. I would like to make it a distance spell. So you're going to spend sorcery points to cast Ooh. a distance spell. Yeah. Nice, okay. Yeah, which I'm means gonna you move can pass to the, 30 feet, I think. Yeah, I'm going to move to the extent of my range yeah, and then reach pretty much out. Where you are, yeah. I think you, you're within 30 feet where you are anyway, so... Max, you look metal. <laughs> I'm going to try and make it easier on you. You can fly. Uh, yeah, I mean, he senses. He's like, I think I can sense it. Uh, it is still going to half his movement, but it does increase it from, like, 15 to 30 feet. Like, he's, like, still heavy as he lifts off the ground, but, yeah, he is now able to fly. Um, but still slowed, unfortunately. Okay. So, but yeah, still better than 15 feet. Yeah. Um, great. All right. Uh, so that's Lucius. If I was to cast slow on the environment, would that technically negate our... <laughs> no. Okay. That would make uh, anything worse. Valena <laughs> will call out, the next foci, spirit, now! And you can see the more of these foci that become infused, it's like Valena is growing weaker. Her muscles are like slowly shrinking. Like her hair is going grayer. Like she is becoming smaller. And like you can see that that divine power is being siphoned away from her. Um, and she calls out. And yeah, Max, like, it's like, I'm trying. Um, as he's going to attempt to do what he can. But uh, Ayla, is there anything you would like to try and help out with or do? There's really not much I can do because I can't move. Mm. Um... Magic items or. That's right, if, if the answer's no, the answer's no. I don't have anything that he could... What does the... No. Um... I have a ring of free action, but it requires attunement. Mm -hmm. Which I could throw to him, which... Uh, magic can neither reduce your speed nor cause you to be paralyzed or destroyed. Yeah, unfortunately, with the attunement, it would require an hour to attune to it. So, then okay. I have nothing. So you're just sort of like, you've got Sentry near you, you're kind of like trying to see what's going on, but nothing can help. Uh, Valor is unfortunately still concentrating. Um, I rolled a 12, plus 6 is not enough. Uh, Max is not enough. Yeah. Max is 20. Max is 10. 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He can get basically back to where he was. Um, mm. Let's take another turn. That's not gonna work. Yeah, he's it like, I can, I can reach there, but I won't have the time. Uh, and he can dash. Uh, I don't know if I can actually fully. He will dash, fly. He's flying magically. You know, even though the the flight is not physical, something is still slowing him down. Like this, this magical transformation is making it harder for him to fly. Um, he manages to reach the point, but he's like reaching out towards it, and he's is not. Is Valor able to haste? Uh, not this time. She failed her saving failed. throw. Uh, uh, if if I if she'd had like plus two more to her save, she would have made it. But uh, she was like two off. Uh, Sentry. Um, I'm trying to see if I can. No, I don't think I can get to Max. Um, I will. I will then move. I'll move back behind Valena, back towards the mm -hmm. connection station. Do you want to dash? Yeah, I'll dash. So you basically get all the way back. I'll get back. Here, yeah. Yeah. All right. So you get to the the back right behind Valena, uh, but that's the full turn. Yep. Uh, Nova Vija. So Max is not going to be able to touch it within no. this. Unless you've got some crazy idea, like I'm happy to take some crazy ideas. Well, I was going to use my amethyst lodestone to gravitational thrust him towards. Well, he's it. there. The problem is, is like he's like reaching out to touch this thing. But if he... I give him a boot with that. <laughs> <laughs> to save his movement so we can use his action. What does gravitational for... thrust do again? Um, Which is the inventory. Amethyst lodestone. Um, as an action, you can expend one charge to focus gravity around a creature you can see within 60 feet of you. The target must succeed an 18 strength saving throw. We pushed up to 20 feet in a direction of your choice. Mm. So it can would you, get him you there. would need to. So you would probably. I would say you would need to like 
push him into it. So I know it says by your choice, but it has to be like a line, basically like away from you kind of thing, I think. Or like pull him. But uh, whereabouts is no. I'm by you're the floor. Like, you're oh, back yeah. here. Yeah. So, and you're currently metal as well, aren't you? And I got you? fly on me. So you can move 30 feet with the metal transformation. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, so you can you can try and get as close to him as possible and try that if you'd like. Yeah, I like so rather than because he he won't make the saving throw, he's not going to resist it. But there, I think it would be trying to overcome this like metal, this weight basically to like thrust him. So let's see if you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So you can even if I'm really... flying though, because yes, I'm, I'm up. even if you're up here, he's also flying. If he's there, I can just smush him into it. It's going to be tricky. I'd say you can definitely make a make a roll for it. Make a charisma ability modifier because this is like a spell casting thing. I'm also but, just wondering if I can get Tian Gong and teleport. But if I get Tian Gong into, because Tian Gong isn't metal. Uh, no, technically no. So I could get Tian Gong into a good line, do the teleport switch between us, and then gravitational thrust him. You could do that, but doesn't Tian Gong go after you? They go on. At the end of your turn, after you've Is taken it? your turn. No. Is it a free action to move them? I think so. Okay, uh, yeah, that's fair enough. As a bonus action, you can teleport and magically swap. Yeah, know that one. Uh, you can mentally command the Echo to move up to 30 feet in any direction, no action okay. required. Okay, yeah, all right. Well, 30 feet's unfortunately going to take it where you are. You're not going to be able to get him any further than that. But, so if, but if Tiangong moved to where I am, mm -hmm. we teleport moved, I still have movement. That's true, yeah. Oh, so if you did it that order, to get you like sent Tiangong first, swapped, and then moved. Because then I have a. Is it a bonus position. action to activate the gravitational thrust? It is an action. It's an action, so it makes sense. Yeah, it works out. All right, so yeah, As an so, action. So you would have Tiangong would go there. Yeah. You would then swap places with Tiangong. Yeah. And then you would have 30 feet of movement to like basically go. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. To go into a good position. Uh huh. And then you're sort of facing a line. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'd say that now you're in a much better position to kind of like try and thrust him forward. Um, still gonna be a roll, but it's just gonna be a much easier roll. Uh, what roll are you, do you want? Uh, just d20 plus charisma, because this is gonna be overcoming the sort of transformation metal spell. So plus five. Ooh. 17, 18, 19, 20, yeah. 21, 22. So Ooh. Nova sort of thrusts with this this gauntlet that you took from Zarkir and you feel this gravitational wave kind of pulse out from it. And it just gives Max enough that where he's reaching out, you know, slowed by this thing, he manages to touch, reach forward and, and grasp it. Awesome. Now, you guys don't get to see Max's memory, um, but I am going to make uh, a check for him. Uh, this would be with his strength modifier uh, because he would focus on the battle. How good's his story, though? That's that's what I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to read his face, how epic it was. I love fighting. I've got oh. 22 passes. <gasps> no, Max. We Tell can't. better stories, Max. Um. So what you see is Max is kind of rebuffed by this thing. Uh, he's kind of like pulsed away from it, like <laughs> as he's knocked back. Um. He still loses two points of strength. Uh, he also gains a level of exhaustion, um, and the, the the column begins to spark. Uh, the metal effect on everybody ends, uh, right. and another effect is going to take place. One, two, three, four, six. Um, <laughs> this one. Uh, okay, so from the anvil, um, black lightning. Uh, mm -hmm. Crackles out and strikes the three nearest player characters. So that would be Quill, Sentry, and Me? Valor. Oh, Valor. Count. Oh, uh, Nova. Me. So Nova. Day five. It's even, so I'll just roll just a d6. Do it for me. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Want... Four, five, six. One, two, three. It was eight. Uh, I'm useless. Let me be useful. Let, let me tell you, though, it's not actually lightning. It's necrotic. Oh, uh, wow. As Yay. this thing strikes you. Woo. But uh, So against Ayla, this is an attack roll. 24. Yep. Uh, against, who was the other one? Quill. Natural 20. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> Critical hit. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, 22. Yeah. All right. Oh, shit. Sentry and Ayla are going to take. Do do do. Get ready to quaff, everyone. 
<laughs> 14 necrotic damage to both of you. Uh, you have disadvantage on strength ability checks, and you are at half speed. Um, as this lightning kind of courses through your body, you feel it sap away your strength. Uh, that lasts until a new event or a task is completed. So disadvantage on all strength checks, half speed, and you take that damage. Because I'm raging, does that negate my advantage on strength? It would. It would just make so it I'm flat rolls. Roll. Yeah, it would just make it flat rolls. Uh, for Quill, that is going to be 8, 16, uh, 32 necrotic damage. Um, and you have the same effects. Disadvantage on strength, half movement speed. Uh, half. Oh, again, but the metal's gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. metal's but yeah, gone the metal is now that. gone. Um, as this kind of like blasts outwards, striking the three of you. Um, <clears throat> Max is like, he like looks exhausted as he touches this. Uh, That's rock better for him. My concentration on both things are gone. Oh, oh dear. That's not good. Yeah. Um, Valena kind of like, you see her shudder. Um, and as that folk like, you begin to see the column crack. She looks up and she holds her hand out with the hammer. In fact, she'd point her hammer at it. And you watch as the hammer flares with magic. She shrinks again in sort of size and strength, but the column reforges itself as she refixes the foci that Max failed to, to properly infuse. Um, uh, she looks and says, like, <clears throat> she looks over towards Ayla, and with her other hand, she like holds it out, and that line that was connecting you to the column goes into Valena's hand, and you she is now like focusing on both things. You are free to move and can attempt to reinfuse with a different column. Um, but Good. this is <laughs> sapping Valena's strength quickly. Okay. Uh, you do not think no, she can maintain this corners. for very long. Okay, so okay, that okay. Means someone else has to take I can that get tether? Tricks. I would also say, well, Max also is exhausted, which means he has disadvantage on ability checks, and ability checks are what he needs to make the infusion. Uh, so he kind of stumbles back. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 you can see that, like, he almost seems shaken up by, like, something. Like, it's something... He's seen things that he probably has found very upsetting. Um, and he's, like, stumbling backwards, like, holding his head uh, as he does so. Uh, that was Nova's turn. Um, we then go to Quill. <sighs> Okie dokie. Um, How am I going to get over there? Yeah, I want to try and find a way of getting you over there, but I don't think I have much that can... Help, unfortunately. Um, you get a gravitational blast, and you get a gravitational <laughs> blast. <laughs> uh, Lucius, you're up next afterwards. I know you can't move, but if there's any spells you want to cast, I'll just um, bring in my aura of vitality at third level, and uh, as a bonus action, two d six on myself. Okay. Just to Bring back that massive chunk of health I just lost. Lucius. Nice for healing. Lovely. <laughs> Lucius. You're the best DM yeah. ever. Just tell me what you want. Here we go. I mean, this is the encounter for creative ideas, but... If I was to make a wall of ice into a ramp, like bridge... Yeah, you've done this before. You've done similar stuff before. With the Helter Skelter. I basically just want to connect that diagonal to this one with 10, 10 centimeter... 10 centimeters. Uh, 10. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I only got six if it's 10? If they're 10 feet. Why have I only got six? I don't know. 10, 10 feet, so that's 100 feet of bridge. 100 feet of ice bridge. Which, you know, of course. I will say this just is going to divide the map it's as divide you see the map, it. But yeah. I can get rid of it as soon as possible. All you need is a little bit of momentum, and you're basically there. Well, I'm trying to big make benevolent a DM. Big. Yes. Oh, I've, placed, I've placed the minis now, so you cast that spell. Okay. <laughs> well, I was thinking the way I was going to do it was flip them so the walls are like horizontal. Uh huh. And yeah. it's like anchored Side. up yeah, here yeah. Okay. and on that bit. You see what I mean? Yeah. And they're suspended above so people can run it's underneath. It's like a bridge. It. It's like a bridge, yeah. It's a very weak bridge in the middle. It's literally made of ice. It's like it it's will touch the like anvil five foot halfway, thick, though, isn't it? like a support. Yeah, it's five foot thick, but there's nothing in the middle. If it's like well, between it's two anvil. far points, the anvil. You want it to touch the anvil? No, I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, you can make like you can make like you can, you, you can definitely make like a ram, but it is gonna have to be like anchored. Like even if it's not <laughs> like every point, there's gonna be like arches that come down okay. and stuff like that. Because um, I don't quite have enough to like make it fully sure reach anyway. So I'll just. What if these are just like the bridge bits that come down? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And that's all goes there. 
I'll do it at a higher level than expected to make it extra fancy. I mean, you don't have to do that. Oh, it's a fancy bridge. You said that it works. Well carved. I feel like it's necessary. It's it's cool. Amazing. So yeah, I mean, you you cast the wall, cast the wall of ice. There's no question about that. You create this sort of like bridge with these structure supports. If you run like onto it right and do a cool stance, you'll slide the whole way without using any movement. I will say that Ayla can certainly make an acrobatics check to try and get extra distance. So make the it bridge. an athletics check. Uh, I think this is about balance, not uh, not pure strength on this I'm one. Not great at those. I can you remove this at any time. Just let me know. Done. Yes. All right. Meanwhile, as a folk guy has been broken, uh, v uh, Valena needs to complete another task of uh, around the forge. Uh, this is going to be. Uh, <clears throat> so she says, before you must, before you can reattempt that folk guy, you must take energy from the forge, take it to that folk guy and install it, similar to how the energy was discharged previously. Um, so the anvil now crackles with radiant energy and very similar to the lightning energy you had to take away from the foci, you now have to take energy from the anvil to the, the depowered foci that Max is next to. Nice, so while you're co cool surfing over there, slap the anvil. <laughs> so we, yeah, we can't, I can't, I've got extra time to get to it then because yes, that yeah, needs you, to happen you have, before That has to happen to before it. you can get there, yes. So someone else can actually help me by doing that while I make my way. Okay. My merry way yeah. across the ice. All right, so Ayla, you want to try and get across the uh, where the foci is? Yes. All right, so you're going to go on the ice ice bridge of doom? <laughs> well, sure. Let's not call it that. Ice bridge of doom? <laughs> sure. All right, so this is <laughs> it's no check for you to climb up on it. You're more than strong enough to just jump on top of this bridge and run across it. The biggest thing here is going to be your balance as you try and gain the extra distance and speed. I should have made it a luge. Like a Even if you did, you could still luge. slide over the sides. Yeah, that would be worse. Wait. Uh, uh, 16. I'll say that it's fine. You managed to make it across. You kind of uh, managed to slide, but that is going to be a dash action for you to get all the way across. It's going to be a movement and an action to get. It's like 100 feet. Can I grab that energy on the way past? <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot. It's okay. an action. It's a bonus action to take That's the energy. That's fine. I will be over at the other one, then. Also realize I can't dismiss the wall of ice. It's very much a physical object. Yep. It's there now. It's there now. We well, can't so dismiss. <laughs> it's there. In some it's good news, architecture for solving. <laughs> Vala, sort of sensing that like things are going wrong, uh, she pulls one of her arms away, still maintain that concentration. Like I think I can help. Call me if you need my aid. Oh. Tell me what you want. Uh, like haste or portal. Yeah, luck case or portal base, basically. Um, Max, uh, he like staggers back and he's like desperately holding his breath. He's like, I'm sorry, Ayla, I tried. It's fine, don't worry. It's fine, we're, we're good. And he will, uh, I will try and fetch the energy. Well, he has to get through that wall of ice, remember? I said that there was There's archways. Yeah, that there was oh, yeah. That's uh, fine. <laughs> He will. I am not it's a beautiful <laughs> elven sculpture. So he will move. He will hold his action. That if somebody basically passes him the energy, he will then move to back oh, to cool. where Ada is. Okay. So he's going to try and like ferry it like that. But he's like holding his. He's like tag me um, to do that. Really Sentry. Yeah. Yeah. I'll um, I'll run up to the anvil, tag the energy, and pass Five, it to Max. Ten, Fifteen. So it takes about twenty feet of movement to get the energy. Uh, it's going to be some radiant damage coming your way. Rock and roll. Uh, oh, luckily that was a very cool roll. 15 radiant damage. Okie dokie, overall concentration for vitality. 17, that's cool. Yep, that's fine. And you've got about 10 feet of movement left. Um, so touching it is a bonus. bonus action. So you move, bonus action. You get 10 feet next to Quill. And then you would need to do... I'll do uh, a dashy dash. Yep, you can do a dash. Yeah. And then as Max was waiting, he will <laughs> take that from you. <laughs> is it the Arnold? Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they did it before us. <laughs> Beat you to it. Uh, plate on plate. <laughs> hmm. It takes 22 points of radiant damage, and then he will action dash. Like so basically back up to Ayla. Um, and then he will... Uh, Unfortunately, he can't infuse it, but he's ready there waiting to sort of infuse it, basically. Okay. Um, Nova Vija. It's not a lot to be done right now, is it? I mean, you know, there's plenty of things, like setting people up, giving people buffs. I can't buff anything. 
can stab him. Getting, um, getting ready. Can I wander uh, into the just more towards Sentra? Yeah. Um, Sentry, I'm kind of wondering if Pearl was right, and maybe you should be Hope, and I should be Connection. Uh, wh- whatever, whatever works best. You're our morale officer. You're full of hope. Okay. Then okay, I'll take hope. The mace. High five. Bam. <laughs> we can do that in person. <laughs> um. And then can I um use as a free action get Tiangong to start climbing up towards the connection pillar? Mm-hmm. You so move, I'm next to Sentry now. You move next to Sentry, and then Tiangong. So it is 20 feet up in the air. How's he going to get up? They can climb. Uh, yeah. So. You could make a check if you want. Or... No, this is you can climb the same way, I think. So I think it's that difficult terrain. I think he can get there, but that ends his like Tiang, their turn. They yeah. basically get there, and then that's it. They spend their whole. Yeah, I just want just them in place. Yeah. So yeah, kind of. Ksh, 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 a swordsman-like figure kind of climbing, uh, ascending up to it. Um, okay. At the end of Nova's turn, uh, uh, what is Sentry Quill and Nova, a, uh, the forge begins to rumble and a number of columns begin to... Uh, oh, they're cute. This one. My bridge. <laughs> Quite, uh, it might do. Um, these columns of earth seem to erupt forwards from these like seismic kind of. Psh, these columns erupt. I need, uh, yeah, uh, Quill, Sentry, Nova to make dexterity saving throws, please. Okay, okay. Eighteen. Eighteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. We get plus three from me as well. Oh, eighteen. Uh, Seventeen. 19, Twenty. Twenty-one. Fifteen. 21. Nova is the only one. Nova, you managed to kind of throw yourself to the side. <laughs> also, Sentry's aura kind of like protecting you. Uh, Quill and Sentry, you both take 20 points of bludgeoning damage, and you have a choice. You can either uh, be knocked prone and pushed to one side of the column, or you can go up the column and be on top of it. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? You right? want to ride this bitch? Ride it? <laughs> if you ride a column? Well, I'll ride a column. All right. Ride it. So you're both about 30 feet up in the air as this column. <laughs> How much you up. of the column is Sentry taking up versus Quill? Mostly Sentry, and then Quill sort of <laughs> on the edge. <laughs> I'm hanging onto her leg. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, you guys erupted, and those columns actually provide like um, they block like passage and line of sight and stuff like right. that. Right. So they are big. The the miniatures are not big enough as right. I would like them to They're be. Substantial. They are substantial. Uh, Quill. Uh, God, now I'm up here. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hang on to dear life on Sentry's leg. Right. Don't fall off this thing. Lucius. It's <laughs> very little I can do from here, so um, yeah, I forego my action. All right. Uh, Valena rapidly is failing with power. You can see her desperately withering away as she's trying to hold this other foci, but also waiting for this, you know, this next task to be completed. Valor, um, can you give luck to Valena? Uh, it won't affect her in the same way. It, it, her, she's expending her divine power. Th- that won't affect anything. Your portals, do they last long? They'll last until until I'm ready again. Until I have to maintain concentration. You right. Give me luck, so I can try and do this thing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you want luck, or or you want? I don't know what. Uh, is it haste, luck, or she can create two portals? So anybody can use it at any time. Lucky it's not a like reroll, actually. right? It's basically a reroll, yeah. yeah. Well, wh- where are we in initiative right now? So you're going to go next. Me uh, next. Yep. Yeah, okay. But the foci is not powered. But Matt can has I, the. Can I be hasted so I can power it and then yes, use you it? You absolutely could do that, yes. I'll do that. All right. So, yeah, so nice. Val will lean over and sort of be like, all right, hold still. Um, and you feel. Ayla, like, you see, like, another Ayla sort of, like, almost separate from you and everybody's moving really slow and whenever you do something a few seconds later, this after image of you does it um, as you kind of jump ahead in the time stream um, and you see Vala kind of, like, this aura of magic surrounding Ayla as she does so. Um, so it goes to your turn next. So you are going to take the take thing from energy, Max, empower the it. thing, and then activate yeah. the thing with your second yeah. action. Okay. Uh, you are going to take... 14 radiant damage, mm-hmm. um, and then yeah, you feel a very similar, familiar sensation as 
you find yourself in this liminal space and the same request. Uh, you, this, this time it is a matter of, yeah, uh, spirit um, and a memory, memories and events and connections and things like that that connect that to Ayla specifically and what that means to Ayla. For strength. Well, spirit. It doesn't necessarily have spirit. to be raw what was strength. The, what was the explanation uh, yeah, of spirit again? It is, yeah, I'll read it out for you. Um, courage, determination, strength, willpower, uh, the long struggles uh, in life, basically. Okay. The, the will to survive. Uh, Ayla's going to remember when we were at the top of the tower in the City of Glass, mm -hmm. and we were trying to get the beacon, Sentry's beacon out mm -hmm. to save all of the Guardian race, basically, mm -hmm. and we were surrounded by hordes of feral Guardians coming at us, and Lucius would let off the biggest spell we had ever seen from him, mm -hmm. and Ayla managed to, like, do some heavy damage to a giant one. Everyone, basically, everyone was working together to, and, and had the willpower to work as a team regardless of the situation, to make sure that we saved part of a Rois that needed saving, and an entire race, and the willingness of our entire group of people to do that. Okay. You feel that connection. Can you make a, let's say, constitution ability score? Check oh, a constitution? Yes. A constitution check? Yes, so d20 plus your con mod. All right, okay. Uh, please. That's an 11 plus 5, it's a 16. 16. Not enough. It's not enough. You feel <gasps> that same sort of rebuff, like you, you share this memory and, uh, and again there is almost this sort of, as if you've not quite made enough. You begin to see the moments in that memory where it could have gone so wrong you see your friends not successful, but now you almost see a version where the Feral Guardians tore Lucius apart before he could cast that spell, where Sentry was ripped apart by the Overlord and never saved the Guardian. Like, you see this like awful turn of events and it rebuffs you from it. Uh, that is a minus two to your con. Um, you have a level of exhaustion and uh, that would also be 17 less hit points as well. Okay, I can't buffed. alter this on my sheet right now. So no, that's fine. You don't need to. Um, and that is the second failure. I'm sorry, I can't. No, no, yeah, it's it's oh, like dice rolls, man. Good. Like dice rolls, dice rolls. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> after Ayla, you see Ayla. All of you see this, like and she's rebuffed in the same way that Max was. Um, she is stumbled backwards uh, as she emerges. Valor does manage to kind of keep herself ready, like being able to offer power if it's needed uh, in the ways that she can. Um, Max, uh, it seems that the Foci still has power at least. It doesn't look like it needs to be repowered just yet. Um, Max will... He's going to look at you, Ayla. We failed separately. But we're both warriors. When you're backed into a corner, you find a warrior who has your back. He's going to reach out a hand. Oh, yes, Max. And the two, he's going to attempt for the both of you to try and connect to this. Okay. Something odd happens. You watch as previously one person touched it. As both Ayla and Max touch it, there is a sort of flash and... Ayla, I mean, you... I mean, you see things that are not your own memories. You share a connection, this momentary drift where your memories and Max's align. And it's quite... I wouldn't say harrowing, but for you it's a revelation because you see Max on Alfheim. You see him fighting alongside other elves, uh, fighting off Hadar spawn on this home world. He fights alongside elves that you almost recognize, that like people that seem so familiar to you. You see various other wild elves with 
storm powers, with fire powers, with cold powers, just like you have this unnatural storm in you. Max has seen others like you, and, and the two of you, you, your memories mix with his, and you think that you're fighting alongside him, but you're also not. You see him training on Gideon Prime. You see him being sworn in and knighted by Callus, and the pride, you feel the pride. You feel this this hero. You see him on world saving civilians from these alien monstrosities of Hadar. You experience battles that Max has fought in as if you were Max. And vice versa, Max has the same experiences with you. I'll have you roll this with strength modifier, with advantage, as you and Max <laughs> combine your memories to try and overcome this. Fusion. Yeah. And the DC will be lower as well. Natural 20. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. The foci bursts to life. And rather than just one line, you now see two arcs of lightning. One to Ayla, one to Maximilian as they stand there. The forge flares once again to life. Valena, looking pain, suddenly almost has a moment of respite where she feels this burden taken away from her almost as that third foci bursts into life. But three more still remain and two have already failed. And that is where we're going to end today's episode. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. We can't it's the time. Now. Let's, you know. Jeez. Um, so we haven't got many failures left at all. No. I'm not going to tell you how many, but it's not a lot. It's close. No. It's, yeah, it's close. close, yeah. It's close. It's, you know, oh. it could go either way. Uh, Valena heavily weakened. Uh, Vala does have her abilities to share if necessary. Um, and, uh, yeah. Almost. Almost. But it's going. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is very cool. Yeah. Definitely a lot more sort of... It's it, it's not meant to be like, you know, damage is a risk. You know, you guys are still taking damage, but that's not the big risk here. The no, big risk is cerebral. like not being able to reach the foci in time, not yeah. being able to complete these tasks yeah. is the bigger bigger problem. Um, uh, and yeah, these ability checks, like, I will I will say now, like, if you have spells that can, like, give people, like, your driven yeah. purpose, absolutely can be used on these. Bless nice. spells, guidance spells, anything like that would all help on awesome. these ability checks, right? So, Cool. With that, that is going to be the end of today's episode. Uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.